course, supporting Sonetta and the House of Consciousness. And for the record, please, I'm asking everybody, do not unmute your microphone. Do not unmute your microphone and also keep your camera off. The only cameras we need to see is Brother Tazariak and Brother Chris MVP Harris. So again, those are the rules. It's a simple rule. Keep your camera off and keep your mic muted. There's no question in the debaters. There's none of that. They are the debaters. If you want to debate, go email sonnet at saw.netta at yahoo.com. All right? And you'll get on the stage and do your own thing. All right. So <clears throat> I want to say, first of all, thank you for the both debaters for actually showing up. <laughs> and um, let me just read out the debate timing and structure now. Now, earlier, me and Captain had a, had a text message about the whole introduction stuff. Each debater, I'm gonna, what I'm going to do, Cap, is that each debater has an introduction. And I hope that's not the debate. It's just to lay out what you plan to do tonight. All right? And um, after that, we're going to have um, each debater is going to have 10-minute rounds. We're going to have two-minute rebuttals for three rounds. And then after that, the final part is the question and answer round. Each debater gets to ask the other debater five questions in a seven minute period. And then after that is done, we're gonna have closing remarks by Chris Harris first, and then Tazarek will close out. Then the debate will be over. If the brothers wanna stay on and have a dialogue with the audience after, that's when the audience could um, come up and they could ask questions. That's if the debaters choose to stay on. We usually do it or we do an after show on Sarnetta or wherever, all right? Hold on so, real quick. <clears throat> Excuse me, Garfield. Our opening statement is still five minutes, am I correct? Yes, it's, it's five minutes on record, but it's not, it's not sometimes, I mean, you know, it shouldn't be a long thing because you're basically introducing yourself and whatever you're doing. It's not, it's yeah, not to actually right. showing slides. So it's basically, you just not showing any, it's not me. Um, it's a five minute opening. Am I correct? That's the house rule. That's what was sent to me by Senator. Am I correct? All right. Yes. Yes. Thank you. I don't, I don't think you want to take that long anyway. Personally, I don't think you want to take that, but you can, if you want to. That's yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. If he, if he wants to concede after, you know, I like to use all my time wisely. That's all. Hey, um, real quick. The, um, and there's no slides. It's just the introduction of talking. Is that what yeah. That's the that's introduction of talking. That's all it is. Okay. No sweat. Just laying, okay. just laying out what you're doing. Okay. All right. No. Now let me situate my timing, my clock. And um, hold on one second, family. Let me get this together. My timer. So that I could keep the time properly. And the reason why I'm wasting time is because I'm trying to get some people here in who have not come yet. They're, they're just getting the link. And all right, cool. Sorry. Right, so here we go. I'm going to. All right. Let me just get my clock together. Hey, I don't know if this is a house rule or not, but shouldn't the cameras remain on for both combatants, not shutting them off? Is that a house rule or no? Um, it's not really a house rule. It's just yeah, yeah. Cameras supposed to remain on because you're supposed is. to see the other person's face. That's right. Yeah. Put that camera back on, man. It's time to rock and roll. All right. Stop turning right. the damn camera off, man. Let's go. <laughs> All right. Cool. Hold on one second. Since y'all want it, man, you fuck with the bulls. All right. Talking. Let's rock and roll. Talk. We don't see the, We don't see you yet, Chris. Come on, Chris. And by the way, only Chris and Tazariak's right. camera should be. We don't only want to listen, the light skinned niggas about to take over for the next couple of hours. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Two light skinned cats, we bring it back. You know what I mean? Captain is first. Yeah, that was y'all say. All right, give me a second, family. Let me just sort this all right here. Yeah, no, all phones are on mute, right? Just make sure that all phones are on mute. Hey, real quick, so I can't use my slides to frame my argument in my opening? No, that's, that's just, just a verbalization. Uh, here we go, I found it. All right, here we go. I'm not understanding that. Got quite sure. No problem. All right. All right. Chris, that's why I was saying I didn't think we needed uh, five minutes. But we'll see how it goes. Let's rock and roll. You ready? You ready yet? All right. 
everybody turn off your turn off your camera byron coleman turn off your cameras turn off your microphone and i want to welcome pastor bennett in the building and we're going to start immediately the first person that's going to introduce themselves ladies and gentlemen this is captain tazaria from isupk represent new york harlem in the building peace and love to the brother and you can begin this is your introduction there you go I appreciate it. I'm Captain Desire Gavai CBK on the commander Jenny Hanna, the leader of this nation on the face of planet Earth. The topic of this debate, I believe, is called Does the Biblical Jesus Copy Plagiarize from Kimmon? And I think it's an important debate. I think it's a stupid debate. I'm going to be extremely ignorant in this debate, not against Chris Harris, but against this dumb information that they're trying to make be applied. To the Bible. This is not about bringing up no dumbass picture of Mary, uh, that the Madonna, the Black Madonna. That's not in the Bible. This is not about anything that's not in the Bible. If there's not a book, chapter, verse for it, I don't want it. And then the second thing, if it's coming from a pyramid text or a coffin text, I hope he has the source of who had access to said pyramid text or coffin text when it excuse me when the new testament was written you're not battling a christian you're battling an israelite so that whole immaculate conception don't work here whatever you think you're gonna bring with osiris ain't gonna work here if speaking of osiris this nigga got a daddy so if you make it osiris and horus and jesus and try it's almost like mixing and matching all of this together is going to force me to bring up geb because that's osiris father I don't know about y'all, but I don't know nobody that want their father that's known as either homosexual or putting a penis at his mouth. Now, y'all forced me to talk about that because y'all want to talk about Osiris and Horus and Kemet. So I have to talk about what's in there. So if we're saying that it's copy and you're just taking particular words and saying because he said this word here, like if you think about it, there's so many different verses, chapters and books in the Bible. And to search out, it says water here. It says amen here. It says Mary here. So because it says Mary here, and this person is Marie too, or Mary too, then they copied it. That makes no sense whatsoever when there was other people named Mary around Mary. There's other people named Jesus around Jesus. It's not a unpopular name. It's a popular name. So what we have to make sure we do is keep this focused on the biblical side. So I hope this brother is prepared. Um, that's what I plan to do to be prepared and we'll see what goes on from there. So that's really all I got. I'm ready to rock and roll. All right, thank you, brother Tazariak. All right, let me reset this clock. Chris Harris, MVP Harris, you are up my brother. Let me know when you're ready and I will start the clock. That's dope, 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 dope. Wonderful, 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 wonderful. All right, my name is Chris MVP Harris. I think everybody knows who I am. Um, I'm somebody that teach against the proponents of the Bible. I teach what we call comparative mythology. I teach history and I teach anthropology. And my argument today is simply this, that the stories found in Ke Kemet predate the Christian narrative by some oh, thousands okay. of years. Oh, okay, gotcha. Are we serious? Hold on, hold on, Captain, you gotta mute up, Captain. Hey, you can give him his time back. That wasn't at you, Chris. I, I thought I was muted. I was talking to the camera guy. I apologize for that. All right, I'm going to start you over, Chris, from the beginning. And mute up, mute up, Captain. Mute up, mute up. So if that, that error don't happen again. So let's mute up. Chris, I'm going to start you from zero. I'm going to give you all your time back, beloved. All right? Whenever you're ready, jump on. Let's go. Okay, so as I was sitting up there saying before, when we see the stories inside of ancient Kemet, we know that these stories predate the biblical narrative by some 3,000 years, right? And you have many temples that teach many different things. You have the temple of Karnat. You have the temple of Heliopolis. You also have the, the priesthood of Ptah. You have the priesthood of Amun-Ra. So you, you have different cosmologies and different cosmologies that teach different things at different times. And this is what most people um, that follow the biblical narrative tend to fall for. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put things in their proper perspective today and show you that um, 
the characters found in Egypt um, or the characters found in the Bible are no different than the characters found in Egypt. And the Bible is simply a story, mainly the New Testament Gospels are simply a story told symbolically, symbolically. Listen to what I'm saying, family, that they are symbolic of a much older story. His entire stance is God gave the New Testament. God ordained the New Testament. Therefore, the New Testament stands as the original. See, the name of the debate is not, I believe, plagiarism. Plagiarism is nowhere in this discussion. Plagiarism is nowhere in the title. It is called, Is Jesus a Copy of Ancient Egypt? That is the name of the debate. That is the fact, not a belief. So that's what I'm here to discuss with Captain Tazaria today. And I think at the end of this debate, I'll prove my point while he'll just do a lot of filibustering, gish galloping, uh, red herring arguments, slippery slope arguments, and no true Scotsman arguments, and a lot of ad hoc fallacies. As he said, he's going to be acting very ignorant today, showing me that he's not really prepared for this debate. We must master the English language first before we begin to master religions, and I'm going to prove my point in my opening round. Thank you, Garfield HOK. I don't run to it. I run from, I run, excuse me. I don't run from it. I run to it. So morning coffee is in the house, man. Let's get it done. All right. Thank you very much, my brother. You do have more time if you want to, just to let you know. But if you say you're done, you're done. All right. So now it's the first round and this is Captain Tazariak and he has um, 10 minutes. This is the first round, ladies and gentlemen. Again, keep your cameras off. If your camera is on, I'm going to move you to the waiting area and you're not going to be able to hear the debate. All right. If your camera is on and your name is not Chris MVP Harris or Captain Tazaria, this is simple instructions. Simple. All right. Um, all right. So Tazaria, you up, my brother? And I'll start. Hey, I got two points. Hey, hey, before before you go, Captain, I also want to say this because God for you ain't say it yet. There's absolutely no cursing, no name calling, none of that. All right. That's all I wanted to say. At each other, I'm saying, as far as going at each other, there's no cursing and name calling with each other. All right, that's hey, all I want to say. For clarity, I can't say the information is ignorant. Oh, no, you can say that. Hell yeah. Okay. I'm talking I about. I can't say Chris is ignorant. Right. You can't, okay. you can't okay. be just banging on each other. That's all. That's And the same go for Chris. No calling each other out your names. We're going to have a clean debate here. That's it. Definitely. That's exactly what I want. Um. Uh, Garfield, I got two points of share. I want to share a video first, and then I'm going to hey, get to before he gets started. I'm sorry, before he, I can't see his camera. Can well, he's going to be talking, though. He's going to be talking, so you're definitely going to see him. Do you see me now, though? He's saying, I think he said he can't see my camera. I can't see Cesariak at all. I'm at the top. It looked like from what I see, I'm right next to Garfield, and you right below me from on my screen. Yeah, I don't, I don't see him anywhere. Garfield, can you help him out with that? You can can y'all see me on the camera? Yeah, I see you right now. Yeah, so the way I see it on the first row, I see me. Okay, there you go. There you go right there. I okay, see you now. Yeah, I, I see you too. I see you. We all, all right, see you. Right. All right, cool. Whoever is speaking is going to be at the, the forefront speaking. All right. Got Again, you. if you're not participating in the debate, mute your mic. All right. All right. All right. All right so, uh, so Garfield, I just got two points of shit. Before I get to my PowerPoint, I got one video. So I'm going to share that. And then you said my time will be paused as I go into my presentation. So mm -hmm. I'm going to set up the share now. Um, y'all let me know if y'all can see this share right here. Can you see that? Yes. So this is my man, Chris Harris, the so-called MVP. He must be the MVP of the WNBA. That's not an insult. But anyway, um, I'm going to play this clip and see what he said. Remember, this is about is the biblical Jesus copied from Kimmon? So I just want y'all to hear what Chris says before I begin my presentation. Question, I heard Garfield Reed said, well, how do you prove it? Can you show me transmission? No, I can't show you transmission, but I what can show you say? ask ourselves a what question. I heard Garfield what Reed say? said, well, how do you prove it? Can you show me transmission? Hmm. No, I can't show you transmission, hmm. but I can show you a connection. Now, I, um, I want to stop so I can share my PowerPoint now. Uh, Garfield, so I'm yeah, gonna pause the time. Pause the time. I'm yeah, gonna stop it. this. I'm gonna reshare. I wish I could have just shared my computer, but I don't see that option here. 
So I'm going to share my PowerPoint now. Share. I'm going to present the from the beginning. Um, do it from the beginning, and then display settings. Um, how did I do that before when I said, there we go. I think that's it. Can y'all see the screen now? Yes. Thank you. So you can start my time now. With that said, I should really just walk away from this debate because does the biblical Jesus copy plagiarize from Kemet, even though plagiarize is not in the title, Chris is correct about that. If you can't show the transmission of the New Testament writers having access to what he said it's copied from, then what are we talking about? So what we have to first establish is how or when or what is the timeline for the New Testament being written, recorded, X, Y, Z, right? I'm going to skip this for now. So now first we got um, Matthew 22 and 32. It says, I am the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. God is not the God of the dead, but of the living. Everything about Kemet is about what you do in the afterlife. Everything about the Bible is what you do in this life. What you would do in this life is what will happen when you come back in this life, not what you do in the other life. Copy is an imitation transcript, a reproduction of an original work, such as a letter, painting, table, or dress. Plagiarize to steal or pass off ideas or words of another one's own as your own. So he would have to show where the writers or people of the New Testament had this. This is called an ancient I'm sorry, I got to move this ancient manuscript comparison chart. When you look at this chart, it'll tell you of all the things that you see. So you have Lucretius died at 55. You have Pelini, you have Plato, uh, date written 427, 347, earliest copy, AD 900, approximate time in between 1200. When you look at all of these, when you get to the New Testament, date written, first century AD 550 to 100, earliest copy, second century AD. So that's less than any other record that you can find. When you look at further, it says there are thousands more New Testament Greek manuscripts than any other ancient writing. The internal consistency of the New Testament document is about 99.5% textually pure. So he would have to show if now I'm have more, but so he would have to show how those writers had access to all of these different coffin and pyramid texts because Egypt's history, which is long, it's not something where it's just one coffin test. We look at the Book of the Dead as something that we, we think that it's something that everybody had access to at this time. No, you would have to go into the coffin, break down or understand what the coffin is saying, and then try to apply it to what the New Testament writers were writing into it, which they didn't have access to. This is going to be a body bag. In the 1830s, German scholars of the two men school tried to date the books as late as the third century, but the discovery of some New Testament manuscripts and fragments from the second and third centuries, one of which dates as early as 125 AD, Papyrus 52, disproves a third century date composition for the New Testament. Additionally, a letter to the church at Corinth in the name of Clement Roman 95 AD quotes from 10 of the 27 books of the New Testament, which lets you know it's already in circulation by the time he's quoting these books. So if he doesn't have information of that timeline, he cannot say that they copy from it. Ignatius of Antioch was a student of the Apostle John. He was martyred, killed by lions in the arena of Rome after his arrest and during transportation to Rome. He wrote several letters, some obviously spurious, but they're not, they're ignored here. The letters of Ignatius written very close to 107 AD quote from several New Testaments as well. To quote from a book not only means is the book written, but it has to be in circulation. Everything. If Gar Garfield's book, if I quote from his book, that means not only was his book written, it's in circulation, it's talked about, it's gathered, it's moved. Of the four Gospels alone, there were nearly 19,000, excuse me, 368 citations by the church fathers from the late first century on. This includes 268 by Justin Martyr, 1,038 by Arrhenius, active in the late second century, 1,017 by Clement of Alexandria, by Origen. Tertullian, I could keep going. Earlier, Clement of Rome cited Matthew, John, 1 Corinthians 90, excuse me, 95 to 97. So what he would have to show again is how it's copied. In conclusion, listen to what the experts say about New Testament dating. 
F.F. Bruce, well-known professor at the University of Manchester in England, says the amount of evidence available to establish a first century date for the completion of the New Testament is so great it cannot be reasonably denied. William F. Albright, who formerly a liberal critic of the New Testament, said in his new book, in, uh, Discoveries in the Bible Lands, we can generally say emphatically there's no longer any solid basis for dating any book of the New Testament after about A.D. 80 two full generations before the date of between 130 and 150. Now, let's say if it's 130 or if it's 80, he still has to show how the New Testament writers wrote this, put it in circulation, and had access to every single coffin text, pyramid text that he's talking about. John A.T. Robinson wrote in The Launching of the Death of God that the book should be redated. So we have to, he has to break this down. If you take a look at, this is the map of Paul. This is Paul's journey. Show me where Paul went to Egypt. Paul, with all the letters that Paul wrote, he would just have to show Paul's access to Egypt. That's what he would have to show. I'm going to keep going. It says, sometimes after 70 AD, a Syrian philosopher named Mara Bar Serapian, writing to encourage his son, compared the life and persecution of Jesus with that of other philosophers. Why is this important? Chris going to make you think this is about some damn vegetation or whatever Osiris and them doing for plant life and suns and moons. What this establishes, if they're talking about Christ outside of the Bible, they're talking about an actual person that you could substantiate. What benefit did they have? Uh, I'm sorry, I'm going to keep going for my time. It says he existed as a man, the historian Josephus, which he's probably going to try to come up against, um, grew up priest, excuse me, grew up in a priestly family in first century Palestine and wrote after Jesus' death and his known associates. His personal name was Jesus, as Josephus informs us. He was called Christos in the Greek, which just means anointed. That ain't special. That ain't something that's New Testament, which is a translation of the Hebrew word Messiah, both of which means anointed. His brother's name was James. He won both Jews and Greeks. This is simple as hell. He was executed. I'm sorry. Let me go to the next slide. Reporting on Emperor Nero's decision to blame the Christians for the fire that had destroyed Rome in AD 64. The Roman historian Tacitus wrote, Nero fastened the guilt on a class hated for their abominations called Christians by the populace. I'm only establishing this so that we can understand Christ was an established real person, whether Chris believes in the miracles or not are irrelevant to this subject. Once I establish that Christ is a real person, his birth and life also is real. Two minutes, two minutes. Another important source of evidence of Jesus and Christianity can be found in the letters of Pliny the Younger to Emperor Tra Trajan. I probably said that wrong. So now, let me see, I want it somewhere. So now, when it comes to anything else with the Textus Receptus, which is what most people use, it's based on the vast majority of 95% of the 5,300 Greek manuscripts in existence. This is why it's called the majority text. It is not mutilated with deletions, additions, amendments, as in the minority text. The text of Receptus agrees with the earliest versions of the Bible, the Peshitta, the Old Valgate, the Italic. The text of Receptus also agrees with the vast majority of 86,000 citations from Scripture by early church fathers. The text of Receptus is untainted with Egyptian philosophy and unbelief. So what he would have to show, let me see if there's any, what he would, I'm sorry. Hey, can you pause my time for one second, Garfield? I, I, I know I got less than a minute. I clicked something on the PowerPoint that um, I shouldn't have, and I got to get back to my PowerPoint. I apologize for that. Um, let me shrink you down. There we go. I think it's right there. I'm sorry. So he would have to show. I'm going to stop my screen, but I'm going to just keep talking. So he would have to show again how the New Testament writers had access to the things that he says they copied from every single text that he shows. He has to show what New Testament writer had it, the name of the New Testament writer, and show how it was transmission, which he already said there is no transmission. He can't prove a transmission. With that, I yield the rest of my time. All right, ladies and gentlemen, you actually had 20 seconds left, but are you yielded? All right, so let me yes. reset. And that was Captain Tazaria first round. Now we're going to get to Chris first round. Then after that, we're going to have a two minute rebuttal from Tazaria and then a two minute rebuttal from Chris. All right. So, Chris, whenever you're ready, I'll start the clock as soon as you start speaking. 
Chris, are you there, my brother? I'm waiting for Chris. I hope you didn't get kick off or anything. Let me wait for my. All right, so let's get ready to get this thing started here. Let me get my presentation up. Let me get my share screen up. Uh, <laughs> Nobody can see that screen, that screen share you was producing to Zariok and the computer can't see it either. That was a bunch of nonsense. Let's get this going here because he way off in the argument that we have in the day. Okay. All right. So can everybody see my screen? Yes, sir. All right. So we got to frame the argument correctly. The name of the debate to Zariok is, is Christianity or Jesus copy from Egypt. Now, in order to frame the argument correctly, we are not talking about forgery. What you just produced was a red herring argument. In order to prove any of that that you just proved, you got to prove Jesus existed. And Eusebius, who, ex um, who existed before the time of um, Josephus, he, he never wrote about what Josephus put in there. He would have saw it. But let's just get to my opening statement because I'm going to chew all that up in my, open, in my uh, rebuttal. Now, it goes without saying that the story of Jesus found in the Gospels are not unique, nor are they original. My studies have led me to the conclusion that these narratives represent ancient cosmological beliefs. What do I mean by this? When we read the story of Noah, we believe it to be an original. A man falls asleep, a god tells him to build a boat, and he is to gather all the animals upon this vessel, vessel and eight people replenish the world. But when we studied a little deeper, we found another flood story that predates the Noah story by some 2,700 years. The Gilgamesh, a man has a dream, a god tells the man to build a boat and gather all the animals upon it because said god is angry with mankind, just like in the Noah story. As you can see, these stories may sound different, but the archetypes found in the story are the same. And as we can see in the stories of the Gilgamesh epic was older. So it's only fair to say that the Gilgamesh story is the original and the Noah story is the imitation or copy. Now he put the definition up there of what a copy is. It's an imitation. So the name of the debate family is, is Jesus a copy? So he, by default, is, is the uh, pro in this debate. He's saying Jesus' story is an original story. That's why I said you got to master the English language first. Anybody arguing what date the Bible was written in which you hang yourself in by sitting up there saying that it was written in the first century, so therefore we know the stories and narratives contained in it are false. The argument that you're making is a plagiarism argument. And because you did not know the definition of plagiarism or did not really prepare properly for this debate and you prepared yourself for a plagiarism debate, everything you just said in that first round was irrelevant. All I have to do is show you imitation in this debate. So in this presentation, I'll be explaining how the Jesus narrative is a mere copy of a much older archetypal story found in Egypt. Now, there are three motifs that I'll be presenting today to prove my case of imitation, not plagiarism. Copy and plagiarism are not synonymous with one another. Let's go. Definitions, copy, this is the definition of copy. An imitation, comma, transcript, comma, or reproduction of an original work, such as a letter, painting, a table, or a dress. We're gonna be discussing motifs, which are a distinct, distinctive feature or dominant idea in an artistic or literary composition, which we see in antiquity prior to your first century, you gave the date, first century, second century manuscript called the Bible, called the New Testament gospel. And we're gonna be dealing with archetypes, a very typical example of a certain person or thing, an original that has been imitated. That's what an archetype is, a reoccurring symbol or motif in literature, art or mythology. So let's get this thing started. My three points of argumentation are the virgin birth archetype, the saviors and his miracles archetype, the dying God and resurrection, resurrection Eucharist archetype that we can all find in Egypt. Now, let's give an example of a clear definition of imitation. As we can see, this is artwork found in Kemet. And this is artwork found during the Byzantine era. These are clear imitations. This is a clear imitation because this predates it to Zaria. You are arguing plagiarism and what date in the church fathers that you were arguing for. Everything you said was irrelevant to the debate. 
Now, the Egyptian Madonna and child imagery prefiguring its Christian counterpart by centuries to millennia, the Egyptian and Christian divine mothers even share the same name with Jesus' mother named Mary. Of course, while Horus' mother possessed the epithet Mary or Mary, as the Egyptian word is translated by several scholars, including Egyptologists Dr. William and Sir William Flinders Petrie and Eric Hornhung, in addition to the fact that there have been pre-Christian goddesses named Mary, such as on the Greek island of Cyprus, where your book come from, as well as in the Middle East in India among the Basque. So what we have here is this Mary epithet being applied to your virgin birth, or maybe you don't believe in the virgin birth. We are gonna deal with that today also because mainstream Christianity does. That video was old and outdated and that was about plagiarism. See, let me put it in its proper context to Zariak. Let's go to the next slide. Now, I wanna to go to the virgin birth. Now the appellation Mary is not unique or original. That's what unique means to the Jewish mother of God. The important sacred epithet Mary, Mary, or Mary was attached to numerous figures in ancient Egypt, such as deities, kings, or priests, or government officials, and others. In other words, Moses was learned in all the ways of the Egyptian to Zariak. There it is right there. Even Egypt itself is called Ta Marie, which means the beloved land or um, beloved land, excuse me. Now Horus' mother is called Mary Aset, which means beloved Aset. Um, and the New Testament narrative tells us in Matthew chapter one that Mary was highly favored and she would bring forth the holy child through the spirit of God. The story was already told 3000 years prior to the birth of Horus. We're gonna get into some new information here. All right, but before we get started, we got to go into the stars of the east because Matthew chapter two spoke of the, 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 these priests who looked up in the sky and saw the stars in the east sign signifying the birth of Jesus with the wise men who brought three gifts. But let's take a closer look and see if the story is original or unique. Remember, guys, copied ain't got nothing to do with plagiarism. The imitate the, the definition of copied is not synonymous with plagiarism. That's a court case. I'm not here doing that. I'm here to show you all but that this gospel story is an imitation. Now, Osiris coming was announced by three wise men, which were called the three star, three stars as Barbara Walker states, Mintaka, Alam, and Alantak in the belt of Orion, which point directly to Osiris star in the east or the Sophist star, the significator of his birth. So these three stars are the star of Safadet, as we'll learn later on in this, the three stars point to what? The sun being born. This is very, 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 um, how do I wanna sit up there and say, it's very, very important that we understand that the virgin birth motif is not literal. It's not literal in your book, no can, nor can you culturally tie and show a cultural context with Christianity and Judaism to Zariak, but you arguing what date the book was written. So let's continue on now. The star in the east, it was called the star in the east because the Egyptians recognized that the rising of Cyrus with the sun or Heliacli occurred around the summer solstice, the time of the Nile flooding. Now, the time of the Nile flooding is represented by who? Osiris is the sun who becomes the river. The river raises and the river does what? The river gives bread and growth to that land. This is why Osiris will be seen later on in this presentation Two as the giving water. Two this minutes. Is important in this argument that I'm presenting here today. All right. So not only is we're going to find out that Osiris is the bread of life. We're also going to find out that Osiris is the living water. If those who drink him shall never thirst. Now, let me say this real quick. He's saying you got to prove transmission. No, I don't. I'm showing you an imitation of a story. This is very significant in this argument because if your book is ordained by God as you think or you believe it to be, then you just got to prove the God. You can't use Eusebius. You can't use Josephus because we know Josephus is a forgery because Eusebius knew nothing. But prior to that, nobody ever spoke of Josephus works and this man named Christ in those works. That's irrelevant. That's Christian literature that you're reading. You're supposed to be a Hebrew. So let's go to the next one. The bread of life. Now, Jesus in the gospel performs a miracle with seven loaves of bread 
um, this is found in the narratives of Matthew chapter 15 and Mark chapter 8, 5 through 6. Jesus feeds 5,000, right? But when we read in the Per M Haru or the Book of Dead, we clearly see that Horus makes seven loaves of bread that are presented to Osiris in chapter 53b. What does the bread represent? The bread represents life because Osiris waters rose on the Nile and it gave life to the entire area of Egypt. As we see in um, um, the pyramid text 373, we understand that Osiris is that bread of life in Book of the Dead chapter 18. It says, quote, unquote, the, the deceased make a pledge for Osiris that he shall receive eternal life. Osiris is also the Lord of bread and wine mentioned in the pyramid text. Time, 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 time. So with that being said, thank you. Was that 10 minutes, Garfield? Yes, sir. Thank you. All right. Um, Tazariak, you have um, two minute rebuttals. It's up to you right now. You have a two minute rebuttal. Ladies and gentlemen, turn off your cameras. If you're not participating in the debate, keep your mics muted. We have a lot of people in here. At the end of the debate, if these brothers choose to stay on, I'll give the audience an opportunity to ask them a question. All right, brother um, Tazariak, are you ready, brother? For your two minute rebuttal? Yeah, can you, we can share a screen in this rebuttal, right? Yes, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, can you see my screen? I just wanna make yeah, sure. Yes, I can, yes, I can. Let me just make sure, uh, um, God damn it. I ain't the best, uh, here we go, slide show. On current slide. And then display settings is, there we go. You can see it now, right? Yes, sir. Tell me when you start. Two things I wanna point out, I hate liars. There's one, like, liars copyists plagiarists i hate him this debate ain't got nothing to do with noah or christianity he lied to y'all and i want y'all to hold him to the lie that show that's why he showed you that stupid ass madonna i could talk stupid about the stuff y'all said i could do that that stupid ass madonna of mary and the son has nothing to do with the bible you have to show in the bible that's why i made sure biblical was in there Biblical story meaning book, chapter, verse to show that mother and son sitting like that in the Bible. Just show it. That's all you have to do is show it. Don't tell me where Christianity copy because I'm going to agree with you. You have to show me in the Bible where they copy. When you look at the interactions of Mary and Christ in John, the second chapter, when Mary asked her to turn water into, turn the water into wine, Christ said, woman, what have I to do with thee? It's not a mother and son connection. In Matthew's 12th chapter, when they say your mother is standing without Christ said, who is my mother? Them that do the will of my father. He also lied when he said that <clears throat> the audio I played was from years ago. That audio I played was from one month ago. One month ago, he did that debate and said he can't show transmission. This is about is the biblical story of Jesus copy from ancient Kemet. The biblical story, meaning you got to go to the biblical text show what text they copied from and how they had access to that text. That's what he has to show. If I go to the next slide, he brought up the stupid Mary. The Mary thing makes no sense because what I can show is that the Israelites in the New Testament copied from the Israelites in the Old Testament because it's our culture. So just look at this Hebrew and Greek. Hebrew and Greek, in 2 Maccabees 6 and 6, it says, neither is it lawful for a man to profess himself to be a Jew because he was under Greek rulership. So when you see Mary in the Greek, that's Miriam in the Old Testament, which means rebellion. Here, and when you look it up, this is on the blue line. Time, 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 time. I'll just pick up in my 10 minutes, no sweat. All right, let me stop my screen. Um, Let me stop it. All right, I'm going to mute my mic. All right. Hold on, Chris, it's your All time right. for your two minute rebuttal. Let me know when you're ready to start, brother. All right, can I bring up my screen real quick? Yes, sir. Let me, let me hold on one second. Um, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Let me bring up my screen here. I lost my um screen here. Um, all right. All right. All right. Hold on, hold on, Chris. I'm gonna wait for your screen to come up. Is it up? I didn't see your screen yet. All right. Um, the screen, the screen is not up. Chris, it's, it's not up? No, it's not up, brother. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's get this going. All right. There you go. Okay, cool. First of all, Captain Tazariak want to pull you in the damn Bible to sit up there and try and have an argument about the Bible like we on Clubhouse arguing about damn Bible verses all day. 
I told y'all, he has to err on the side of belief. He has to argue about Bible verses. And that's why he's saying this ain't about that. Yes, it is. Christianity begins with a man named Christ in the Bible. Even the definition tells you that Christianity begins with a man named Christ. And you yourself sat up there and said that the Bible was written in the first and second century CE or AD, whatever you want to say, which actually kills your entire argument. And this is what I knew he was going to do. He wasn't going to be ready for the argument that I was going to be presenting today. And he's trying to dismiss the evidence that we're proving that these are mere copies. He is so silly that he wants to look at this and say that this is not an imitation. He wants to say that this is not, this doesn't have anything to do with the debate when this is a later image of a much earlier image that we find in antiquity. This is what they produced out of this. These pictures show a hundred, uh, it, it, it should be able to awaken your mind. And this is what I call suspended logic that he uses the suspended logic to sit up there and say, oh, it doesn't have anything to do with that. Why don't it? We see a much earlier image being represented by the netter, and we see a much later image, Johnny Come Lately doctrine, being represented a lot later in something newer. That doesn't make any sense to Zariyak. You prepared yourself for a plagiarism argument, and my argument is not plagiarism. You put together that little funky little video when my argument was against Garfield Reed and not against yourself, and you tried to apply it to this debate, and you're already failing to establish your part. You're saying that the biblical narrative is original. The opposite of copy is original. I need you to get on point. I knew you were going to do this and everything that you're providing for the audience right now is nothing but a bunch of smoke and mirrors um, uh, to Zariyat. It's time, all brother. Time, love. time, time, time. All right. Thank you, Chris. That was his rebuttal from the first round. Now, this is going to be the beginning of the second round, which is Chris is going, I mean, I'm sorry, to Zariyat is going to come with his second round, which is going to be 10 minutes long. So Tazari up when you're ready, let me know. You can start sharing your screen or can get the ball rolling. Ladies and gentlemen, again, turn your cameras off. If your camera is on, I'm gonna kick you out in the bait. You'll get a copy in the morning so you could rewatch it. I'm gonna say it again, turn your cameras off. All right, turn your cameras off. People are so stubborn, man. Let me know when you're ready, brother. Okay, I'm just setting up. You can hear me, right? Yes, sir. Wait, and you can see my screen, right? Yep. Okay, hold on. Wait, don't start my time yet. That's not weird. I'm supposed to start it. I apologize. Turn your cameras off, family. A quick question, Garfield. This is, has nothing to do with... How do you go backwards... Um, if you like, if I go forward, I'm not a expert right. on it. Rob, Rob, on, are you there? He's an expert on this. R. Jabari. Okay. Yo, we go backwards with. Oh, I got it. I Let's just go back with. I just, I just figured it out. Yeah, I just figured yeah, it just out. Just push the back arrow, and you're good. Thank you. I appreciate that. All right. Cool. <laughs> All right. So now I'm ready to start. Um. I'm Hold gonna... on one second. Let me get your time right. No problem. Get your time right, brother. All right. Let me know when you're ready to start. I'm starting now. Okay. Um, the problem with what uh, Chris is doing, he's comparing this to Christianity. This ain't about Christianity. Even the images that he says that artwork comes much years later. This is about the biblical. He's he's wondering why I'm going into the Bible because if it's biblical, it has to be biblical. He said, I don't understand. Hold on, hold on, hold on, Captain. Hold on. I'm sorry. I got to start your time over. Um, Chris, you got to have your camera on, beloved. Remember, you got to have you. the camera yeah, on. Yeah, you got to have that camera on, man. Put the camera on, man, so we can see them black eyes. All right. All right. Oh, you got to have it. You got to have it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> too old. We too old. Oh, oh, pause, brother. <laughs> I said black eyes. I said black eyes. Not I, eyes. I know the Kevin in you think I said another word. Oh, uh, man. Come on. <laughs> The, the uh, Kim, really, he thought really. he's so influenced by Kim and he thought I said ass. I said eyes, brother. Black uh, eyes. Oh, man. <laughs> All right. You ready, you ready to Zaria? <laughs> hey, boy. <laughs> All right. Let's go. Let's I'm go, guys. I'm born ready. I am born. This is, don't bring me outside. So I'm All ready. Right. You got you got my time together? Yes, sir. Pre you appreciate it. Five, you don't understand. Four, 
Three, he don't understand the English language. It ain't me. He don't. This is the biblical Jesus, not the Christian Jesus. So when he brings up those things, he has to show. Why did I bring up the in the beginning when the New Testament was written? If he's going to show it's a copy, he has to show the transmission. He can talk about he was doing that conversation in response to God for all he wants. He said there is, he cannot show transmission of the New Testament writers copying from ancient Kemet. So he can't do that. When he brings up Mary, this is the Hebrew and the Greek. When you read the Old Testament and the New Testament, you got the Hebrew and then in the Greek. That's why it may seem different. But Mary in the Greek is Miriam. Isaiah in the Greek is Isaiah. Jesus in the Greek is Joshua. Lazarus, which he's going to try to bring up, is Eleazar. It's not Osiris. Don't let him lie to you. And don't bring up that Gerald Massey nonsense you brought up. Elias is Elijah. O.C. is Hosea. Christ is anointed. That's how you be biblical, which is what this is about. This is not about anything. Now, this is what Gerald Massey said. In presenting my readers, this is Gerald Massey who Chris had. That's Chris Harris' daddy. Like Chris, Chris Harris' daddy is Gerald Massey. And so his daddy said, excuse me, his daddy is looked at as somebody that was able to break down Egypt records. That whole wise men and all that stuff he brought up and the stars and all that come from Gerald Massey. And so this is what Gerald Massey said on page six of his book. In presenting my readers uh, with some of the data which show that much of the Christian history was pre-exempt as Egyptian mythology, I'm sorry, mythology, after I ask you to bear in mind the facts like other foundations have been very out of sight for thousands of years in hieroglyphical language. This is in the 1800s that he's writing this. And he's saying for thousands of years, this has been buried. So even if you say thousands is two thousands and the New Testament is written in the first century AD, that eliminates the New Testament writers from having access to what he's saying they copy from. He's stupid. Then he goes on further, he says that was never really read by Greeks or Romans. So if Greeks or Romans, who were the ruling class at that time, weren't reading that, how are you going to say the poor Hebrews or the poor Israelites, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and Paul and them, had access to that? And he said, could not read it until the lost clue was discovered by Champollion almost the other day. So how in one breath can he say they didn't have it? And here's what else he says. He says, the mythology and Christology remain hidden as those of the now until the century in which we live. The mystical matter shrouded in this language was sacredly entrusted to the keeping of the buried of the dead because the coffin texts are just what that means. It means that it's on the coffin of the funerals. Imagine going to a graveyard and on that graveyard, all the coffin texts or all the spells on that graveyard, you would have to have went to every graveyard to find the spell that you're saying the New Testament writers got from. That's what he has to prove. Assertions about Jesus and whores. One of the more important aspects of Massey writing were his assertions that the parallels between Jesus and the God Horus. Massey, for example, said Horus and Jesus was born of virgins on December 25th. That's not biblical. It is not biblical that Jesus was born December 25th. Even the whole virgin thing. When you go through the virgin thing, Garth, I need to pause my time for a second. Okay, I got you. All right, I'm, I'm going to reach. I'm going to stop the share. I'm going to reshare just so I can be biblical. So I'm going to reshare. I apologize. Let me reshare. And let me go to the um, word. Ladies and gentlemen, again, keep your cameras off. Keep your cameras off and keep your mics muted. The only person should camera should be on is Cesariak and Chris Harris. So I want you all to see something here. You can start my time now. So now when we talk about this whole virgin, let's see where that came from. Let's see if it came from Kemet or does it come from our own text? In Isaiah 7 and 14, if y'all can see this, if not, I can blow it up and make it bigger. Let me try to make it bigger for y'all. I apologize. So if I can make it bigger for y'all, it says, therefore, the Lord himself shall give you a sign. This is Isaiah 7 and 14. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son. This is the virgin that they're talking about. And when you go to the word of that virgin, it's Amma, meaning a young woman of marriageable age. And when you go to Isaiah, the eighth chapter, that's when that child was born. So in Matthews 1 and 21, when it says, and she shall bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus and save them from their sins, the quote is from Isaiah 7 and 14, not from Kemet. So I can show 
where the writers of New Testament got their information from. They got it from the Old Testament because that was the records that they had because they were the Israelites. They can tell you where they got it from. So if anybody's going to show who copied, I'll show who copied. I'm going to pause it real, fi real fast and go back to my um, PowerPoint. So I mean, uh, Garfield, I'm going to go right back to it. I got you. I got you. I got you. Appreciate it. I'm going to share again. And let me go from current slide. And I appreciate uh, Chris's patience as I do this. I definitely do appreciate it. All right, let me make it big. Um, so now I just got rid of the whole virgin in December 25th. He has to show biblically December 25th. Raised men from the dead. Massey speculates that the biblical Lazarus raised from the dead by Jesus has a parallel to El Asaris. I just showed y'all what Eleazar or Lazarus come from. Lazarus doesn't come from Osiris. I just showed y'all that's the Hebrew word for Eleazar. That's what it is. So now I showed you where it's copied from. Tell him to show you how he had access to get copy from to make Osiris be El Osiris, as he's trying to imply. The criticism now. I'm sorry, these assertions influence writers such as Alvin Boyd, Tom Harper, Yosef Ben Yokan. I know it's gonna piss y'all off. DM Murdoch, Murdoch, criticism. Christian theologian W. Ward Gass, a PhD from Harvard and Manchester University, sent emails to 20 Egyptologists that he considered leaders of the field, included Kenneth Kitchen of the University of Liverpool, Ron Lefroen of the University of Toronto in Canada, the United States, Britain, to verify academic support for these assertions. His primary targets was Tom Harper, Alvin Boyd Kuhn, and the Christ myth theory, and only indirectly Massey. According to Gas, Massey's work, which draws comparison between Judo-Christian religion and the Egypt Egyptian religion, is not considered significant in the field of modern Egyptology. Why is he using something that the scholars says is not considered significant in the field of modern Egyptology? It says, and is not mentioned in the Oxford Encyclopedia of Ancient Egypt or similar references of work in modern Egyptology. Gash report that those who responded were unanimous in dismissing the proposed etymologies for Jesus and Christ, and one unspecified Egyptologist referred to Alvin Boyd Kuhn's comparison as fringe nonsense. Theologian Stanley E. Porter has pointed out that Massey's analogies include a number of errors. I already talked about December 25th. The earliest known source recognizing 25th December as the date beginning of uh, birth of Jesus, but is by Hippolytus of Rome written about the beginning of the third century. Now you see why I went to the first century when it was really written. Based on the assumption that the conception of Jesus took place during the spring equinox. So he does that, goes nine months later, got December 25th. Porter states that Massey's serious historical errors often render his works nonsensical. Massey states that the biblical references to Harab the Great were based on the myth of Harut, when we know that the existence of Harad the Great can be well established without Christian sources. If we go, to, I'm sorry, if I don't want to do that yet. Written in 1280 BC, let's talk about the Book of the Dead. There are many books of the dead, but there is no single official Book of the Dead. The books are collections of ancient Egyptian spells that were believed to help the deceased in the journey to the afterlife. That's why I read that verse in the beginning that Christ said, God is not the God of the dead but the God of the living. The title Book of the Dead comes from the Arabic label, re, re, excuse me, referring to the fact two that- Two minutes, the, two minutes, two minutes. found by mummies. Our information about Horus comes from a variety of archeological stories. What we do know from the most recent scholarship on the subject is there were many variations of the story because you have a 5,000 year span in ancient Egyptian history. Egyptology recognized the possibility that the differences may have been misunderstood aspects of the same persona. For example, Horus was killed by a scorpion. Isis had to come and beg Thoth to resurrect him. How can that even be compared to Christ? It says part of the problem with Jesus' Horus claim is that in order to find items that even partially fit the life or story of Jesus, advocates of the view must cherry pick bits of myth from the different epochs of Egyptian history. This is possible today because we were able to go back and get it. But he has to show how the people during that time had access. It says the early Christians, even if they wanted to base the gospel on Horus myth, would have no way to do so. 
that might have been what is known about Horace, but they would have no access to the endless variations that Chris is piecing together. When he tells you different coffin texts, and that, that means they're in different coffins. So he has to show you how they have access to this coffin, had access to this coffin, knew what it meant, understood the spirit of it, and then compared and created the New Testament. That's what he would have to show you. It's easy for us today because Egyptian is dead as hell. And so people can go back in there and get those records. He has to show the excavation of those coffins during that time to get access to it. He has not shown it yet. When I go into my last round, I'll go into Osiris and I'll go into Geb, and then I'll show how can Christ be copied if Osiris has a father. So I want to know who is he copying from? Is he copying from Osiris? Is he copying from God? He brought up G, uh, Jesus resurrecting Lazarus, comparing it to Horus resurrecting Osiris. That don't even compute. Time, 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 time. I gave you an extra four seconds. All right, brothers and sisters, I'm hoping y'all enjoying this right here. I want to say real quick, uh, real quick, thanks everybody for showing love and supporting the debates. We're not done. We're going to continue. This is just a quick commercial break. Let me thank everybody for coming through and showing love to the HOK debate. This is where you get paid for your work. You get the most money here on the HOK debate, all right? The toughest debate lead. It depends on what your stock is. It depends on how you debate. Chris Harris, he's in the $2,000 range plus. Um, Captain Tazariak is in the $2,000 range plus. It depends on your stock and what you bring, okay? Of course, Shaka up most, Brother Jabari, they are all up in that range plus. And of course, it gets bigger and bigger the more capital you can get. So we don't take advantage of you. You're going to make some dollars here because we know how it is over there. The people show love, the people support. So we're going to make sure we get back to y'all. I hope everybody is ready. Of course, I hope you are ready. You see how these debates go in? Respectful. Everybody get a chance to see what's going on. And um, I hope everybody is ready and prepared for tomorrow. We got to make sure we come in the building, show love for our beloved brother, Unc. Sanchez people is coming in. I mean, all I'm going to tell you is, as I look at the emails <coughs> in the text that go with it, it's more of Sanchez people coming in the building. So Sanchez people, they're going to flood the floodgates to make sure they support their brother Sanchez. Unc, you got to get your people up in here. Y'all say y'all rock with us. We need Unc people to get in the building. And Unc got home court advantage. So this should be easy for our people to come in and show love for our beloved brother Unc. A word from our sponsors, and we'll get right back to the debate. Do you want to make money online? That means you're going to need a website. Go to kingtutoring.org business services. There, you'll be able to collect payments from your clients all over the world. Let us help you. All right, Do I see Delcinea. Delcinea, you said people have had issues with the link. Why you ain't call me and let me know that? We could have fixed it right away. Um, I see people buying tickets all day yesterday. I don't see where the issue is at. So if people had trouble with the link, um, we'll go over it and look at it. We'll make sure everything is good. Me and Unc posed to run a, a show today to make sure everything is good. With the links and everything, sis. They built yesterday with Unc and Sanchez. Oh, so Unc is aware of it. Oh, 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 oh. The build yesterday with Unc and Sanchez was crazy. I got you. So let me get back to the debate. I don't want to, um, you know, mess up the flow. 
So we are right back with Unk. Make sure y'all show love and support the debate. Throw that link in there for the people who want to buy the um the stream. And um, we get back with Unk and Brother Chris Harris. And I'll give Chris the same. All right. No, I'll just um, thank you, Brother Tazariak. All right. Um, ladies and gentlemen, again, keep your mics muted and keep your cameras off. Chris MVP, you're up. Let me reset this time. When you're ready to start, let me know and I'll start the clock, beloved. All right. <clears throat> wow. Let's get this started. This is simple. <sighs> All right. Let me know Let's get back clock. to it here. Let me know when what? to start the clock, bro. Let me know when to start the clock. Okay. No problem. No problem. I'll give you a two minutes. Um, when it's two minutes left, I'm going to let you know. Okay. All right. So let's get ready to break this thing down. All work. right. Because now I'm going to be teaching. Hold on. Stop, 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 Chris. Stop, 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 stop. Mac tip, you're out of here, bro. You're out of here, beloved. You're out of here. You're out of here, brother. Yeah, get him out. Get him out of here, Garfield. Get his yeah, ass out. Yeah, he's out of here. He's out of here. All right. Um, ladies and gentlemen, again, you cannot come off your mic. You are doing that. Because when you come in, you're muted. Don't come off your mic. Captain, make sure your mic is muted too, beloved. All right? All right. Go ahead, Chris. I apologize. I will start your clock from scratch. All right. Give me a second. Let me get this back up. Yo, Cap, I want that shirt that you're wearing just because. That's a dope shirt. I want that shirt just because. <laughs> All right, family. So at this – oh, I'm sorry. Excuse me. Oh, I hate Zoom. All right, let me get this. I hit the wrong button. Um, Don't worry about it. Your time going to start okay. from. Am I back up? Am I back up? Yeah. Yeah. There you go. All right. So as we can see, that I'm not really comprehending what Cap is doing here. He's a little bit all over the place. You arguing Haru, Geb, New, get all this stuff. You arguing? It's irrelevant to what I'm presenting here. I'm showing you imitation. I'm showing you the same story in your Gospels, which you just said started in the first and second second century ce and i am reading to you i am reading to you the accounts in the book of the dead which is around like you just told on yourself the second millennium bce which was 13 1200 bce so you're saying that the book of the dead is older then how are the miracles in your text it's not it's not a coincidence so let's go into the bread miracles now, in the gospel, Jesus performs a miracle with seven loaves of bread. This is found in the narratives of Matthew chapter 15, Mark chapter 8, right? The seven loaves in another account feeds 5,000 people with the seven loaves of bread. But in the Perham Haru, we clearly read that Horus makes seven loaves of bread that are presented to Osiris in chapter 53, written millennia earlier than the gospel text. How to get in there? Also in the book of the dead, we see that Horus makes these seven loaves of bread. Thou has made me these seven loaves to live by. Now, John chapter six clearly says that Jesus says that he is the bread of life. But in the pyramid text, we understand that Osiris is the bread of life. And in the book of the dead, chapter 18, the deceased make a pledge for bread of Osiris that he shall receive eternal life. How did it end up there? Osiris is also the Lord of bread and wine mentioned in the pyramid text. Now, more bread miracles. Isis' son Horus was a miracle maker. Healer and raiser of the dead looks much like his later Jewish counterpart. For example, one of the favorite miracles in the gospel is when Jesus multiplies loaves of bread. However, Horus too miraculously brings forth bread, making this Johnny-come-lately Christian miracle mundane and direct and, and weak. Bread, in fact, plays a major part in the Book of the Dead, if you ever read it, in which Osiris says, among other things, I eat bread from the house of the Lord of Offerings. Indeed, bread was sacred to the Egyptians. The deceased, essentially as Horus, propitiated the gods with it. More bread miracles, because the bread represents the resurrection as we are learning. Also in Pyramid Text 338, it says reference is made to the bread of Horus or quote end quote quote end quote wheat bread of Horus by means of which the Osiris will not go hungry. The another pyramid text clearly says Osiris receives beer and bread from Horus like Jesus presenting the disciples with bread and wine. Why is it in your text? 
if it was there from the first and if you if your text is newer our text is older the same mythological uh, concepts found with this man named jesus are being found with this deity named osiris stop straw manning my argument Let's deal with this. I don't want to deal with that one. Now let's go to Book of the Dead 52. It says that it is Horus who makes these seven loaves. Seven loaves represent what? Your daily bread. Seven days of the week, you must eat bread. Seven days of the week in the Christian narrative, your daily bread. Now Horus clearly says, I live on the seven loaves brought to me. Four loaves by Horus, three loaves by Toth or Tahuti. Let's continue on because we're going to wrap this up. Now, Justin Martyr, this is what he says, because you're talking about you got to show it. Justin Martyr understood that these things were copies. And look at the weak argument that he makes. He says, for the apostles and the memoirs composed by them, which are called gospels, have thus delivered unto us what was enjoined upon them, that Jesus took bread and when he had given thanks, said, do this, this in remembrance of me. This is my body. And this is the same manner, having taken up the cup and gave thanks, he said, this is my blood. He gave it to them alone, which the wicked devils have imitated, <laughs> game over, in the mysteries of Mithras, commanding the same thing be done. For that bread and a cup of water are placed with certain incantations in the mystic rites of one who is being initiated. You either know or can learn. So he's admitting here that these things existed before Christ. But wait. This is an imitation because the Osiris myth had a Eucharist ritual. Now, the origin of the Catholic pr practice of transubstantiation is an inherited version of the ancient Egyptian ritual of making Osiris cakes, i.e. bread for being the symbolic of the reborn or regrown God Osiris. Remember, family, Osiris is seen as the living water, as I've already mentioned, when he is when when the so star of Sapadet signifies his birth, which is the sun. He becomes the Nile River, which raises in the Nile, and it does what? It irrigates all the soil along the Nile River. This is why he says, I am the living water, right? Now, this happens during the Koyak Festival, which is 30 days. Each day of the Koyak Festival involves one of the steps of the process of making corn mummies, a kind of old-fashioned chia pet, we may say. But let's keep going. Osiris, this is what it says, preserved examples of the Osiris cakes modes date to 660, 664 BCE. The British Museum describes, see there, see that, uh, Cesariot? That's a source. Osiris, supreme god of resurrection, was closely associated with the life-giving forces of nature, particularly the Nile and vegetation. Above all, he was con connected with germinating grain. Hence, he's the bread of life, as I've mentioned to you the emerging of a living growing plant from the apparently dormant seed hidden within the earth, which is called Emer, by the way, was regarded by the Egyptians as a metaphor for the rebirth of a human being from the lifeless husk of a corpse. The concept was translated into physical form by the fashioning of the images of Osiris out of the earth and grain. Let's continue. Let's look at some images here. Here is a man. Here he is. Um, there's Osiris lying dead. And there's the wheat sprouting from Osiris. This is from the relief of Karnak, 1450 BCE. Predates your Jesus, right? Jesus said he is the bread of life in John chapter 6, verse 35. Osiris is the bread of life again. Grain sprouting from the corpse of Osiris from the um, papyrus of the Louvre Museum. I'm sorry, I cannot pronounce that. I'm not going to waste my time. Osiris is the bread of life. Just watch, family. Another scene showing ears of grain being produced from Osiris' flesh from the coffin of Nepa Worshepi in the 10th century BCE. Jesus says that he is the bread of life. We're seeing that Osiris is the bread of life first. Let's look at this. This is where it gets good because the 12 grain gods of Osiris, based on the seventh hour of the Book of Gates, is seen in the tomb of Usama At Ra, Septepen Ra, Ramesumeriam in the third, in Kings Valley in the 12th century BCE. Look what it says those who generate food from lower Egyptian barley in the fields of the netherworld. Why is it significant? Because we have 12 grain gods doing what? feeding the people, feeding the gods. And here's the 12 gods of Osiris carry 12 baskets of bread to feed the gods. This is in the tomb of Ramses again, right? 12th century BCE. When did Jesus have his 12 disciples do? 
in those bread miracles. He kept breaking bread and gave it to disciples and the disciples gave it to the people. And what did Jesus call the people? Didn't he say you were gods? Two minutes, two have minutes. a Bible argument. Let's two keep minutes. going here because this is where they got the stories from. Osiris and his 12 bread helpers propitiating bread to the gods. Jesus and his 12 disciples giving bread to the people. These things aren't coincidences, which you thought I was going to use some of the same information. Let's keep going. Bread of life. Jesus presents himself as the bread of life in the Passover meal ritual in which he commands his followers to eat so that they may live in his name. But the book of the dead, chapter 30 says, let there be given him bread and beer, clearly wine, which is issued in the presence of Osiris, and he will be forever like the followers of Osiris. So it ended up there first. These things are coincidences. Stop suspending your logic. Why is this significant? Because not only did Jesus break bread, he said that this bread is broken in representation of of what my body now Osiris body was broken by who his brother set his brother set killed him and spread 12 parts of his body all over Kemet and here it is Jesus breaks the bread into what 12 pieces and gives it to everybody what at that secret meal ritual come on man this stuff is a clear imitation you up here reading Christian apologetic commentary on Gerald Massey straw manning my entire argument because you did not understand what this debate was about, Tazaria. Also in Coffin Text Spell 404, this is what it says. Those who rebel have no power over this flesh of mine, for my bread is in pay and my beer is in debt, and this power of mine belongs to me. My power is in bread and beer. My power is life, prosperity, and health. Pay and death are ancient Egyptian towns. Jesus broke his bread body, said, eat this bread, for it is my body. Osiris' body is broken. The people ate Osiris' body. It, it was broken into 12 pieces, just as we see it in the New Testament Gospels. Let's move on. Once again, John chapter 6, verse 35. Stop right there. Right right time. time, brother. Time. All right. Stop. Ladies and gentlemen, that was Chris Harris. Keep on your keep on your camera, brother. All right. I love the vibes. And now we're going to Is it all right if I go get some water? <laughs> I'm thirsty here. All right. Keep your camera on, brother. All okay, right. Cool. Um, it's a two-minute rebuttal time. So we're going to have Captain Tazaria come back on and do his two-minute rebuttal. Do you need to share your screen, Captain? Unmute your mic. Yeah, I need to share. I need to share. I think that everybody is missing what this debate is about. This is about did the biblical Jesus copy from ancient Kemet. Chris makes a point. Well, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to talk yet. I need to share first. I apologize. Yeah. My apologies. Go ahead. Go ahead. All right, mute your mic, Chris, so you don't make Yeah, I was letting you know. Go ahead. I'm sorry, Cap. Yeah, no sweat. All right, um, let me know when you're ready, my brother. Let me um, from current slide. And display settings. Swap presenter. You can see my screen, right? Yes, sir. Tell me when you're ready. I'm ready right now. Two minutes. So he brings up these instances again. The onus is on him to show transmission. Why am I emphasizing transmission? We would have to know of this bread that Osiris has from the records that we in 2023 have access to. He has to show that they had access to those coffin texts that he keeps quoting. Whereas I can show right now why Christ said, I am the bread. First of all, Matthew 4 and 4 says, when he was tempted, it says, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God, which lets you know how important bread really is. So in John, the sixth chapter, it says, your fathers did eat manna in the wilderness. Now we're about to see why Christ is making this reference of bread. Is he making this reference of bread from Osiris or from some coffin text? Or is he making it because the fathers, meaning the Israelites, did eat manna in the wilderness in the Old Testament? So what is he referencing? The Old Testament Israelite records. It says, your fathers did eat manna in the wilderness and are dead. This is the bread which come down from heaven that man may eat thereof and not die. Exodus 16 and 10. And it came to pass that Aaron spake unto the whole congregation of the children of Israel, and they looked toward the wilderness, and behold, the glory of the Lord appeared in the cloud. 
And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, I have heard the murmurings of the children of Israel. Speak unto them, saying, At evening ye shall eat flesh, and in the morning ye shall be filled with bread. So when Christ is quoting and talking about bread, he's talking about what happened to the children of Israel before. Not a damn coffin text. He has to prove that. That's what's not happening here. Y'all get caught up in the whole Egypt stuff. I just want to get caught in the biblical stuff. So show me in the Bible where this is Osiris. This is not Osiris. This is talking about the Exodus. When they came out of Egypt, they didn't have no food, and the Lord rained down bread from heaven. And Christ is referencing that and saying the same way the Most High rained down bread from heaven, I'm that bread from heaven for the salvation of the children of Israel. That simple. This ain't that hard to do. When you go into Matthew and he time, time, time. I didn't realize my mic was um, muted. Time, my brother. All right. So I'm going to give um, Chris the same amount of time, two minutes and 15 seconds. So, Chris, you're up and it's your rebuttal time. Thank you to Zariak, sir. Um, Mr. Chris MVP, Lamar, you keep, hold on, hold on a second, family. Lamar, you keep unmuting your mic. You keep unmuting your mic. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put you in the waiting room until you figure whatever you're trying to do. All right. You're not allowed to have your mic unmuted. Tazara, come and mute your mic. I got you. I muted, I muted it already. Um, all right. Hold on. Let me get Chris. Chris, you can, are you going to share, Chris? Um, you know what? Yeah, I'm going a, I'm to a, I'm a do some sharing. I'm, I'm going to just give you two minutes and 15 seconds, okay? Because he went over his time. Okay, all right. cool. All right. Thank you. Tell me when you tell me when you want me to start, brother. Um, let's get this up and one more time. I hope the audience is enjoying this debate between. Hold on, hold on, one sec, one second, Chris. For those who can't hear, you have to go back out and set your audio setting, and that's why you can't hear when Chris R. Tazaria is um, is talking. But in the morning, you're also gonna get a copy of the debate. So if you can't hear something, you're gonna get a copy in the morning. All right, so those for your own personal use. All right, so you're gonna have a copy of the debate tomorrow. All right, go ahead, um, hold on, Chris, hold on one second. Let me get this clock ready. All right, go ahead and I'll start when you're ready. Okay, give me a second. Mm -hmm. Cap got me thirsty here, boy. He know that Bible, I'll give him that. I'll give him that. <laughs> All right, so um, give me one second. Dope, 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 Captain, dope rebuttal. Beautiful. Let's get this up and all right. So one more time family, I want you guys to understand what Captain is trying to do here. The name of this debate is, is Jesus a copy out of ancient Kemet? And I'm proving it. I'm proving it through archetype and um, motif here. I'm proving it with the 12 disciples. I'm proving it with um, Jesus. I'm talking about Jesus and these bread miracles, which, which represent resurrection. OK, so in this resurrection or these Eucharist miracles that he's producing, he's reading to you bread miracles. He keeps reading about the children of Israel in bread from a religious text. The Bible is a religious text. It's not a historical text. Jesus is not a historical character. You keep reading about the dates in which the Bible was written. But I'm reading to you pyramid texts which predate the biblical narrative. How did they get access to the records? Well, first of all, it says that Moses was learned in all the ways of the Egyptian and he's the high priest. So therefore the high priest learned from him and they continue to learn and learn. Now, Plutarch himself talks about who? They talk about the um, Alexandrian Jews who lived there in Alexandria, Egypt. And they made up 50% of what? They made up 50% of the population. So there's another way that they could have got a hold of, the, of these narratives. See, what you tend to forget is the human element of something called, as Garfield has said thousands of times, cultural diffusion. That these people will take these stories that they're hearing from Egypt, that they're hearing from Sumeria, mainly Egypt, because Egypt was the powerhouse at this time, or the power vacuum at this time, and they had temples all over the place. 
and that they would adopt them to give their people a greater destiny. That's why these things aren't coincidences that you read. You're literally reading a religious text that talks about bread and talks about how bread sustained the children of Israel in the wilderness that God gave them. And I'm reading to you the part M Haru or the book of the dead or the pyramid text or the coffin text in which the gods are giving the kings this bread in order to, uh, so that they may live. Um, Osiris is becomes the Nile and he does what? He irrigates the soil so what? Emer may grow. Look right here, Jesus. John chapter six, verse 34. He said, he that come up to me shall never hungry and he that believe on me shall never thirst. Time, right? time, 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 time. Thank you, thank you, Chris Harris. We're gonna get into the third round now with brother um, Captain Tazaria. I'm gonna start as soon as you start sharing your screen. Keep your camera on, Chris. Oh, my bad. Keep camera on. I keep hitting the wrong thing. I'm thinking I'm hitting um, mute. Okay. Hey, Captain Tazaria, are you there, my brother? And by the way, family, keep your camera off. I don't need to see anybody rolling any blunts and all that foolishness. Ladies and gentlemen, keep <laughs> your cameras off. This is just ridiculous at this point. Keep your cameras off. I'm just uh, getting to my PowerPoint so I can get to the right slide. I'm going to pick up where I left off. Okay. Yep. I did that. All right. So let me do from current slide. Before I get in, wait, before I say anything, swap. Okay, you can see the screen, right? Yes, sir. You think hold, on a second. hold on, don't start yet. Mm -hmm. Make sure your time is right. I'm at zero, zero. Let me know when you want me to start, bro. I'm starting right now. Um, right. Again, the title is not copy. The title has to say biblical. And that's why he's making the point to say, I know that Bible, because every reference that he's trying to give to the comedic text, I'm showing it in the biblical text. That's what this is about. The only way he could win is if he shows the writers had access to said records. If these are coffin texts, he has to show how the writer had access to that coffin text and could read it, which by his daddy's own admission, they couldn't read it for thousands of years. So when we go to Mark 14, when he tried to talk about the blood of the New Testament, no, nowhere does it say he gave out 12 pieces of bread. All it simply says is, and they, Jesus took the bread, blessed it, break it, gave it, said, take it. This is my body. That's the bread part. So now why, what, why is that bread synonymous? Because what is he copying? He's copying the Passover that we celebrate every year. And what do you do for the Passover? You eat bread. Because, and why? That ain't because anything to do with vegetation, all this nonsense that he's talking about. That's why I had to establish Jesus being real, because once he's a real person, now you're taking all this vegetation out the equation. Otherwise, show Israelites doing these vegetation rituals during the time that this was written. You would have to show that. And you can't show that, but I can show in Leviticus the 23rd chapter. I can show in Exodus the 12th chapter when the children of Israel was leaving Egypt, they had to eat unleavened bread. When the children of Israel was leaving Egypt, they had to eat lamb. A part of the tradition is to also drink wine. That's why when Christ says in Matthew 14 and 24, this is the blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many, the same way the Passover is about the blood of the lamb that they slay is the same way Christ's blood. That's the copy. The copy is from the Bible, our records. The same way we ate that bread is the same way Christ's body now represents that same bread. You see how the blood and the bread go together now? Because it's a reflection of the Passover. That's why 14 and 24 says unto them, this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many. So show me how that matches what he's saying is in the coffin text. Then when he talks about 12, is 12, do the Israelites in the New Testament take 12 for uh, anything from Osiris? If I go to 1 Kings 18 and 31, Elijah took 12 stones according to the tribes of the sons of Jacob. That's where we get 12 from. We don't get 12 from none of that nonsense that he's talking about. The only person that's biblical today is myself. If we look at when he talk about feeding these people, if you look at what he said about Osiris, all of that is about rituals of some so-called miracles. They, they, it would have to match up. When we read Matthew 15, he had compassion because they had nothing to eat. 
Don't look at Matthew, Mark as different instances. It's the same instance. So it says, and his disciples said unto him, we have so much bread in the wilderness as to fill a great multitude. And Jesus said unto them, how many loaves have ye? They said seven and few little fishes. And so he fed them because they was hungry. He wasn't saying he's the bread here. He's just feeding them. Let me keep going. One of the things that I noticed that they try to bring up is about the morning star. So now he would have to show whatever text he's going to show to try to meet, think that the morning star is about, excuse me, that the writers of the New Testament got the morning star from that part. What I'll show is in our text. So if I read Numbers 24 and 17, let's see where the term morning star comes from. It says, I shall see him, but not now. I shall behold him, but not nigh. There shall come a star out of Jacob. Why is it even saying the star out of Jacob? Star is a parallel. Like even today we say we call you sun because you shine like one, meaning somebody that can stand out from everybody else. And so the star out of Jacob is talking about somebody coming out of Jacob that's going to stand out from everybody else and shall rise out of Israel and shall smite the corners of Moab. And they conquered Moab. When we read Revelations 2 and 26, it says, And he that overcometh and keep my works unto the end, to him will I give power over the nations. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron, as the vessels of a potter shall they be broken to shivers, even as I received of my father. Verse 28, and I will give him the morning star. So how can Christ be the morning star when it's something that you get? Meaning you'll be the one that stands out just like he stands out. That's what the term morning star means. Revelations 22 and 16, a lot of people omit something important in Revelations 22 and 16. It says, I, Jesus, or Yahweh have sent mine angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. I am the root and offspring of David. Now, that's something that most people won't bring out. The virgin birth, Joseph, is the physical father of Christ which eliminates any connection to the virgin birth that they say comes from Kemet. John 1 and 45 says, Joseph is the, excuse me, Jesus is the son of David, excuse me, Joseph, verbatim, what I just said. So he would have to show, does Horus have a physical father and a spiritual father? Because if he doesn't, then it's not the same. And then you can't even call that virgin when Osiris get cut up to pieces. It's interesting how they only highlight what they want to. But if you look at what they say the copy is, Osiris gets cut up into all these pieces. Isis go and resurrect his penis and then hop on that rod and then bring forth Horus according to their story. That's not in the text. The only thing that's in common is the word virgin, which if you go by America's time today, the word virgin, a boy could be a virgin. In the Bible, a boy can't be a virgin because a virgin is something that you become. A woman becomes a virgin when she gets on her flower. That's Luke 2 and 36. So when it says, I am the root and offspring of David, the bright and morning star, you first have to say, okay, he's the offspring of David, which is a man. And then he's the bright and morning star, meaning he's the star of David. Why is he the star of David? Because that's the throne that he sits on. In Luke, the first chapter, the Lord told Mary, that he would sit on the throne of his father, David. It didn't even say the most highest throne. It said he's going to sit on the throne of his father, David. So if he's going to say that he that the Bible or New Testament is copied, he has to do a better job of what he's saying. Healing the sick. It claimed that um, uh, in the Mur Murdernick Stella, a mon monument from the 4th century BC, tells a story which Horus is poisoned by Seth. I thought Horus was the healer. So if Horus is the healer, because Christ for sure healed. So if Horus is the healer, how is he getting poisoned by Seth and then brought back to life by the God Thoth? Where is this story in the Bible? This story is not in the Bible. If you're going to make a comparison between Jesus and Horus, you have to actually make a comparison. You're not making a comparison. You're trying to make similarities, but the context doesn't even match. Everything he read about the bread doesn't match what Horus did. Everything he read about uh, Osiris being the bread from heaven and all that ain't even why Christ said it. Christ said it in reference to the manna coming from heaven during the Exodus. It says the ancient Egyptians used, I'm sorry, at the request of his mother Isis, the ancient Egyptians used that spell described on the monument to cure people. 
not what he's saying Horace was doing. He has to show where that's at. So they used the spell. Two minutes, two minutes. They used the spell that Thoth used to cure Horace because he was poisoned. Show where they're using Horace's spell. I mean, yeah, Horace's spell. Let me see what else I want. You said I got two minutes left. No, I didn't want that. Um, I think that I think I might be done. I think I just might be done. So what he has to show in his last round, which I hope he shows, is that when the writers of the New Testament has access, which you say I got two minutes left, I just want to show what he said one more time. I'm going to stop my share real fast. I just want to remind the people of what he actually said. So I'm going to share my screen again, and I'm going to show exactly what he shared, which he tried to lie and act like it was a while ago. It was not a while ago. This is what he said. Where the Bible was put together at. So when we open up the biblical text and we see certain texts in there, we got to ask ourselves a question. I heard Garfield Reed said, well, how do you prove it? Can you show me transmission? No, I can't show you transmission. We got to ask ourselves a question. I heard Garfield Reed said, well, how do you prove it? Can you show me transmission? No, I can't show you transmission. Well, my last 30 seconds or 20 seconds, all he did was make some sort of parallel in saying that they connected because the word bread is used, the word virgin is used. Using the word bread, Christ did 37 some odd miracles, over 37 miracles. So just because somebody did something else, even having a God is not something synonymous with Israelites. So whatever miracles they perform does not mean, that's like if you go into Hinduism or something else, does not mean because they did similar things that one copy from another. To show a copy, the text that he's showing, he has to show how the writers of the Bible had access to it. He has not shown it yet. I yield. All right, right before the 10 minute mark. Beautiful, good job. All right, yeah, come on in my brother, Chris Harris. This is your third and final round. Man. Let's oh, get it. Goodness. And after this, we're gonna have a question and answer. Um, um, Tazari, he's gonna. I think Tazar, um, Chris goes first. I think Dark Tazari goes first. But anyway, Chris, when you're ready to start, let me know, and I'll start the clock for you, my brother. Ten minutes. This is your third and final round. All right. So at this point, man, I could pretty much freestyle it because what he's doing is he's ready to start. You want me to start the clock? Uh, can you hear me? Yeah. Do you want me to start the clock? Oh, I thought, is my screen being shared? No, sir. Oh, okay. No, don't start yet. Let me get my screen up here real quick. So we're going to go. I don't want to talk until I get it up. All right. So, all righty. All right. So what he's doing is reading. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay, no yet. problem. I don't, I, don't, I don't see anything yet, brother. There's nothing. Saying... All right, let me just restart this. Thank you, Garfield. Let's do this again. All right, here we go. Can we see it? No, sir. We can't see it? All right, let's try this again. What's going on that I can't, we can't see it? All right, it's saying on my side here. Here it is right here. Can you see there it? You go. There you go. Hold on, let me start the, clock. start the clock. Hold on one second. You can start, go ahead. All right. So let's keep dealing with this right here because what he's doing is he's continuously reading from a religious text. Hold on, hold on. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Yes. I, I, I apologize. Sure. Don't yeah. move, don't move, don't move, don't move. Captain Tazaria, you got to keep your camera on, brother. Tazaria, you got to keep your camera on. His camera is on. Okay, go ahead, brother. Yeah, my camera's never been off. I'm okay. going to mute my mic back, though. All right, cool. Go ahead, Chris. I'm sorry. Go ahead. All right. I want that crown cap after this debate. That's what I want. I want that crown. I'm coming for your crown. All right, let's try this again. <laughs> let's try this again. Okay, can you see the screen share? Can we see it? Testing, one, two, three. I'm sorry, can we, hello, no, Garfield, we can't are you see there? It. Garfield, where you at? I'm right here, I'm right here, my brother. I'm gonna start over the time. I'm gonna reset it and start over the time. Yeah, we All can't right. see it, we can't see it. Let's try it again. Okay, there are we go. here? There you go. There you go. All right, 
So we're going to stay on Jesus' ass here in this debate because he's a Johnny Come Lately deity that done stole out of everything out of out of Kim. And it's an imitation. And I think I'm proving my point here with the comparisons that I'm showing here. And Captain Tazariot keeps on reading a religious text. Like he read 1 Kings chapter 18, verse 31 with 12 stones. Well, there's that mythical number 12 again, right? Then you read about these stars in the east. Right, these stars being born, these morning stars, which are prevalent throughout antiquity in Kemet. How is anything that you're saying undermining anything that Osiris has done as a resurrection deity? How is anything that you're saying undermining anything that Osiris has done as a miracle maker of bread or being the bread and water of life? How is it? You haven't proved it. You're just reading a religious text and linking verses with other verses. Let's look at this command over water here, right? Because it's it, the name of the debate is, is it a copy? You're saying that it should be original. It's not original. You yourself have admitted that first in the, the Bible, the New Testament was written in the first and second century. And we're finding miracles and resurrection deities all inside of Kemet that predate the Bible by two millennia. Now let's look here in Coffin Text 572. It says in Coffin Text, spell 572, we find reference to the magic of Horus, while in the command of the water appears in Coffin Text, spell 353, for example, tit titled, spell for having power over the water. In the same spell, the deceased requests that Osiris, quote, and quote, grant that I may have power over the water, just as Set had power over the water in the eye of Osiris that that night on the great storm, right? Also in Coffin Text, spell 1015 appears the great God who gives water and watches over water. Why is this significant? Okay. It's significant. I'm sorry. It's significant because Jesus is credited in the Bible as calming the storm in the book of Matthew. He's, he's credited as calming the storm. What, does this, what is this symbolic of? It's symbolic of the sun, that morning star, coming through the storm with its calming effect. Everybody know when it's storming and raining outside and you see the sun, that storm clears up. That's what it's symbolic over. And you guys don't want to accept, accept that. So what you do is you suspend all reason and logic to make your um, ideology or religious philosophy fit. And you don't want to accept what's in Kemet. That's what Jesus represents. Set would represent the waters because Osiris being the sun has power over what? Chaos. There are many different cosmologies, cosmologies in Kemet. You just can't look at one and say, well, it's not the same as that. You're right, because in the book of Matthew, this, uh, the raising of Lazarus doesn't occur. It doesn't occur, right? Well, if it doesn't occur, that would mean that, guess what? That still doesn't take away from the fact that Jesus, according to the biblical narrative, is a resurrection deity, he's the son of God, and he performs miracles. But in the book of John, it do. So that still doesn't take away just because you see differences in the stories. How does anything you said take away from what Osiris has done or what he's doing in a religious text? Next, healing with spit. Mark 8 and 23, Jesus heals a blind man. Coffin text, spell 113, Horus heals somebody with his spit. It's the same thing. Jesus is a Johnny come lately. You said you got to show me somebody going in there and you keep playing that silly video of me when I was arguing with Brother Garfield Reed um, um, when he was supposed to uh, debate Jabari. That's a totally separate argument and that's called a straw man. Let's keep going. Let's go back to Justin Martyr. And I want to read this. This is very important. And he says, and when we say also the word who is the first birth of God was produced without sexual union and that he, Jesus Christ, our teacher, was crucified and died and rose again and ascended into heaven. We propound nothing different from what you believe, those who you esteem sons of Jupiter. For you know many sons who esteem writers ascribe to Jupiter, Mercury, interpreting the word and teacher of all, Asclepius, who though was a great physician, was struck by a thunderbolt and so ascended to heaven. And Bacchus too, after he had been torn limb from limb, which is probably taken from Osir the Osir uh, Osiris or Usir narrative also, and Hercules when he committed himself to the flames to escape his toils, and the sons of Lydia and Dioscuri. So when we see here, he's ascribing, hey, look, we believe in the same thing that you believe in. 
It's one of the worst apologetics that I've ever seen. Now, let's look if Jesus is the only one to ascend into heaven, who in a, first, a church father that you mentioned at the beginning of this debate that you probably never read, he's telling you, oh, yeah, y'all got him too, but ours is real because uh, we believe. Now, the Christian tale, Jesus' miraculous ascension into heaven is appended as an afterthought in the gospel of Luke and as a footnote in Mark. So they're different, not appearing at all in Matthew or John. So they're different stories. But that doesn't take away from what he did according to the religious texts. But remember, they were nevertheless supposed to have been eyewitnesses from this astounding event. Where they get it from? Remember, I'm not producing um, things that are, in fact, um, coincidences. These things aren't coincidences. Look at what it says. After studying the precedents for precedents for the accession and myths of other cultures, it becomes obvious, as Justin Martyr agrees, that the motif was added to the Christ myth in order to compete with others. As one of these mythical precedents, the God's ascension to heaven is repeatedly referred to in the very ancient Egyptian text as well. In the Journal of Near Eastern Studies, in an article entitled The Ascension Myth in the Pyramid Text, Berkeley professor, of history, Dr. Whitney M. Davis states that the myth of the ascension of the king represents one of the principal myths of the ancient Egyptian pyramid texts. The ascension of both Osiris and Horus may be found in pyramid text 303 example. For example, here it is, ascending into heaven. It says right here, oh, you Western gods, Eastern gods, Southern gods, and Northern gods, these four pure reeded floats which you set down for Osiris when he ascended to the sky. Let's see, let's keep going. Ascending into heaven in the Bible. Who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God with the angels, authorities, and powers have been subjected to him? First Peter, first Peter chapter three, uh, verse 22, which Peter ain't nothing but Jupiter, by the way. Get it, Jew, Peter, Jupiter. Let's go to another imitation. Let's take a look. This is one of my favorite ones here. In Matthew 3 and 17, in Luke in 3 and 32, it does, this story does not happen in the book of John, but you would agree that it, it's real, but they're not in the book of John or in the book of, um, excuse me, in the book of Mark. But it says, let's take a look at when the so-called gods decide to speak in the New Testament. He said, this is my beloved son in who I am well pleased. Now, when we look, read Newt and the deceased king utterances 1 through 11, it says, to say by Newt the brilliant, the great, this is my son, my firstborn, opener of my womb, this is my beloved with whom I have been satisfied. It's taken right out of the pyramid text, so how is it original or unique when the God of the Bible is clearly paraphrasing pagan texts? Two minutes, two minutes. They can't even be more original. What the fuck is my I'm serious. Garfield, pause my time. I got you, I got you, I got you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, come on, man, come on. Come on, man, we're better than this. All right, stop unmuting your mic. All right, go ahead, Chris. All right, so I want to deal with this, um, this morning star here. Now, in the pyramid text, Osiris is the morning star. Now we know the morning star is um is uh, presented when the three stars of Sapadet point to the birth of the sun at the winter solstice. That's what makes Osiris a resurrection deity, the morning star. Now it re reads, Horus pointed has come forth from thee in his name Horus, who is in Sapadet, Horus and Sapadet, quote unquote. So as we can see, there is nothing unique concerning the eastern star mentioned in the nativity narrative. How does God, how does something so pagan end up in the Bible? The bright star in the east was associated not only with Isis, Horus, and Osiris, and with Hathor, but also with the god Anbu, the dog-headed, um, quote, end quote, and epithet of Cirrus as well. In her analysis of the myth of the bright star and the three wise men, mythologist Barbara Walker states, the star of an An Anubis or Anubis was Sothis or Sirius, according to the Greeks. The eye dog, um, the eye of the dog in Greek, Canopus, 
Sirius is the star forming the quote unquote eye of Canis Major, the great dog. It is the brightest star in the sky. Egyptians believe it held the soul of Osiris, whose rebirth coincided with the rising of the Nile flood. You have to understand the cosmologies. These things aren't real to Zariac. So when Osiris rises with the Nile flood, he becomes the living water. He, those who drink from him shall never perish. The story of Horus calling forth his father from the tomb is nothing but Horus calling Osiris from the grave of winter. And as the waters rise, Osiris comes forth. It's allegory. It's mythology. It's to represent something deeper. And these stories permeated the whole area. This is one of the weakest arguments I've ever heard you make. Time, time, time. I don't think you're ready for this debate. Time, Thank time, you. time, time. Thank you, Chris. All right. So we're going to have two minute rebuttals. Two minutes. Keep your camera on. Um, two minutes from Captain and two minutes from Chris. Then we're going to have the question and answer period. We're going to ask five questions for seven minutes. And then we'll move from there. All right. So, um, when you're ready, you're gonna share your screen, um, Captain, for the two minutes. Yeah, I'm just gonna show um, some Bible verses. Again, this um, so I don't not gonna share. Wait, hold on one second. Let me. <coughs> Real quick, I need y'all to go and cast y'all vote. The vote is up on my community page. Go and vote and see who won this debate, because I will give my um, opinion on who won when this whole thing is over. I don't want nobody following me. Y'all can go ahead and voice your own opinion. Um, you know, I don't want to steer the crowd no way. Use your own common sense. I want you to use your own common sense so they don't think we bias. All right. So use your own common sense. And the poll is already up. Let's get back to it. Check something real fast. Yo, Cap, you want to do another round? I was thinking about it actually. It was actually a little better than I thought. Um, but no, I know I'm pretty good, right? <laughs> no, you're not that good. You're terrible. I, I want that shirt. I want that shirt. I know you want the shirt because you know you can't your ass with you. Say that <laughs> you shouldn't say that out loud like that. <laughs> Yeah, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and I want them gauntlets. I I want that gauntlet, the black one. I want them gauntlets in that shirt. I want them gauntlets in that shirt. Go ahead, brother. Let me see. hold on, hold on, hold on one second. Let me just reset the room real quickly. Um, okay. I'm gonna mute everybody out, and then um, Tazari, you're the only person I want to unmute. Go ahead, unmute, and um, we get right back to the debate. Everybody, keep your mics on mute, and turn your cameras off, except Chris and Tazaria. All right. Shout out to Brother Sanchez in the building, by the way. Peace and love to you, brother. All right. Captain 10K in the building out of Missouri. Peace and love to you, brother. All right. Um, Captain Shear. Yeah, I'm going to share. I'm only going to share. Tell me how good y'all can you can see this. I'm just going to share my Eastward app. Um, just let me know if you can see this. I'm going to share. Yes. Eastward. Can y'all see that? Or is it is it um, hard to see if you just let you me... could see it, but we're not able to see it. Like we'd have to probably freeze it and blow it up. Okay, what I wanted to do, let me see if I move it over. If I shrink this down, you probably still can't see it. Um, what I wanted to highlight was just some verses, just to counter what he's talking about. So I'll, I'll just do it like this. I'll just uh, I don't I don't necessarily need the screen share unless they need to see the scriptures. Um, I'm just going to tell you the scriptures. Uh, hold, hold one second, Captain, before you go. Mm -hmm. For anyone who joined the debate late, you're going to get a copy of the debate in your email um, early tomorrow morning around 7 a.m. Eastern. All right. Let's keep it respectful also in the chat. And remember also, we have a debate coming up um, April 8th with Tazariak again versus Shaka Amos, whose writing can fix the Black community, the ancient Kemetic writings or the ancient biblical writings. Um, also, this Saturday coming up, next Saturday, is Raw Bond versus Aboriginal Power. So everybody's going to get an email about that debate, and that's $20, and that's going to be next week, 
Saturday at around 7 p.m. also. All right. Um, Tazarek, whenever you're ready, brother, I'll start the clock. I appreciate it. Two minutes. When uh, Christ says, I am that living water, first of all, I, again, I don't know how much I can stress in John, the fourth chapter, when it talks about he's that living water. Why is he even saying the living water? All you got to do is go to Jeremiah 2 and 13. I'm sorry, yeah, Jeremiah 2 and 13. It'll clearly tell you, for my people have committed two evils. They have forsaken me, talk about the most high, the fountain of living waters. What is the water? The water is talking about keeping the commandments. It's not talking about what he's saying that it's talking about, whether it be agriculture or anything like that. Like he can't make this about star worship or sun worship or anything because that's against the laws of God. If I go to Deuteronomy 17, it says, if there be found among you within any of the gates which the Lord thy God give thee, man or woman that have brought wickedness, what is the wickedness? And have gone and served other gods. When you go into the Egyptian pantheon, they have tons of gods. Our culture says you can't have other gods. Worship them, either the sun or the moon or any host of heaven. This is why I'm emphasizing he has to show where we copied that from those writings, because according to uh, according to the New Testament and the Old Testament, Christ didn't break the law. He kept the law. So there is no reference to a sun worship, moon worship, or any other host of heaven. All I have shown is how metaphorically it has played back and forth. So when he brings up the sun worship, he doesn't have an answer. When he brings up the waters, the waters is talking about keeping the law. That's what Christ is talking about. So when you go to John 7 and 38 and it's in, in, in the book of John, it is say, he that believeth on me, as the scriptures have said, out of his belly shall flow living water. Why is he saying that? Because when we go out and teach the truth, now they have living water to actually come to life by keeping the laws of God. That's all it's talking about. I ain't talking about vegetation. In order for him to show what he's talking about, he has to show the Israelites using it the same way the Egyptians were, that he says. So the argument is futile. That's why he has not shown biblical copying. Stop. Time, time, time. Two, you got two minutes and 20 seconds. I got to give um, Chris the same. I wanted you to finish your point. All right. So, Chris, you're going to get two minutes and 20 seconds also. It's your rebuttal time. And then after that, we're going to get the question and answer period. All right, let me get a screen share. Uh, let me, oh, goodness gracious, Kat. This is let's not good. Me, let's tell me when you want to start, brother, when you want me to start. All right. So um, let's start this up real quick. So what Captain just made was a very ethnocentric um, argument here. He's judging everybody else. You're not culture. sharing. You're not sharing. You're not sharing. Why is this not um, sharing here? Let me, let's try this again here. Okay, um, let's go. To clock here. won't start. I'll, I'll restart the clock. Um, I'm going to yes, mute the um, RX mic. And everybody keep oh. your mics muted, please, and your cameras off, except Chris MVP and Tazaria. Okay, can can we see this? It's not up yet. It's coming. I guess it's loading up. Okay. Has it loaded yet? Um, no, beloved. Jesus, what is going on with this thing here? This is why I don't like um. <sighs> All right. All right. Let me go here. Go here. All right, let's try this again. All right. Is it up? Hold on, hold on, hold on. So it's double click to enter full screen mode. I don't know if you need to do something on your head. Okay, can you see it now? No, we cannot see it. No. Jesus. All right. Let's try this. Okay. Uh, let's try this again here. <laughs> All right, stay patient with this thing here. Um, I'm trying to get this going. I don't know what's happening here with um, my rebuttal every time I get ready to go do this. 
Um, let's try this. Let's try this again. All right. We have it. All right, here you go. It's a hold on okay. one second, Chris. Those, those are not. Everybody, keep your mics on mute. Your mic got to be on mute, family. All right, let me. You know when I can start. All right, hold on. Let me get the clock straight so that you have your time right. And this is your final third round rebuttal. All right, here you go. Go ahead, my brother. All right, so what Captain just made is a very ethnocentric um, argument here. Now, eth ethnocentricity is when you evaluate other people's uh, cultures according to the standards of your own culture. And this has always been the problem with the Israelite narrative. What happens is they say, well, we don't study other people's cultures. Well, according to the biblical narrative, you guys were never monotheistic because you guys were always being cursed for always adopting everybody else's gods. Just because you read something in a religious text to try to define it does not take away from the evidence that I've produced today to show you that your um, religion, excuse me, your character is in fact a um, imitation of a much older character. Here, I want to show you something real quick. Okay, now let's go here. Here it is. Here is a Dejed pillar with Ra, um, Ra, Ra, Ra rising, and here is Marie Osset and Maris, Marie Neptis. Why is this significant? Because we can clearly see that both of these things are in fact, Im excuse me, this is an imitation of something that came a lot later. You understand what I'm saying? This is the imitation. This came a lot later. This is in your biblical narrative when Jesus comes out of the tomb and the two Marys are there. This is something from a lot earlier. That is something you can just look at it and see that is a clear imitation that we can see in Kemet with the rising of the Dejed pillar and Ra and Osiris versus this Johnny come lately cracker named Jesus. You can't read a religious text in order to prove a religious text and say just because you have laws pertaining to your God, somehow that means you all didn't imitate other people's religions when that's what you all were getting trouble, getting in trouble for all the time. You guys always got in trouble for it according to the biblical narrative. You guys were, says in the biblical narrative, you were there 400 years. Then he talks about you guys don't look at stars and things like that. How so? When in the Matthew narrative, the, the wise men were following the stars, trying to find what? The birth of the boy named Jesus. Then in the book of Genesis, time, they time, about time, the star. time, time, Man, time. we got to get real here. Time. The minutes ain't enough. But time. anyway, it's good. Let's rock out. All right. So now we're going to have the question and answers. We're going to have, I think, first is on. Um, is Captain Tazaria questions Chris Harris. And we're gonna have each debater gets to ask the other debater five questions in a seven minute period. All right, so let me stop the clock. Let me get, um, both mics gotta be open and we're not gonna, we're gonna try our best. I gotta definitely moderate this whole thing properly. Make sure that we don't talk over each other. My brother whose um, face is on the screen, my brother, you need to mute, you need to turn your camera off. Number 460326, whatever your name is, you need to turn your camera off. The only two cameras supposed to be on during the debate is Tazariak and Chris Harris. Thank you very much, my brother. All right. Let's see if there's anybody else's camera on. <laughs> Craig, come on, Craig, you dagger squad. Come on, man, follow the rules, brother. All right. Yo, can we take a water break, man? All right, all right. So hold on. So who's asking? Wait, wait, wait. Tazarik, Tazarik, are you ready, brother? Yeah, I'm right here. Hey, Tazarik, right. if I if I is it all right if I grab a a yeah, bottle of water? If you need thank you. water, that's fine. Yeah, yeah, thank you. So in this era, again, family, this this era, this time of the debate, each debater gets to ask the other debater five questions in a seven minute period. Tazaria gets to ask Chris first. And um, Chris gets the question to Zariak after. All right. While Chris go get his water, again, I want to remind people that there's a Shaka Amos debate coming up with Captain Tazariak, April 8th. Next week, Saturday, is Raw Bond versus Aboriginal Power. Um, who are Black folks in America? Are they Aboriginals, Indigenous people of this land, or are they African Americans? That's, that's what the debate is about. Who are the black folks in this land? 
All right. Um, let me see what else. All right, Chris getting his water. All right. Zarek, you up. I'm going to get the clock. Are we actually good on time, by the way, too? So it's almost 9 o'clock Eastern time, so we're good on time. And for those who came in late, I got some of my brother Marfius coming in late right now. Um, you're going to get a copy of the debate if you paid for it. You're going to get a copy in the morning around 7 p.m., 7 a.m. Eastern, a copy of this actual debate. All right? Chris, are you ready, brother? Woo! Ooh, I needed that. <laughs> All right, cool. Yes, sir. Woo. All right. So, Captain. Yeah, let's go. Let's go. Hold on, hold on. Don't start yet. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh. Ready? Go. Um, did you show any transmission of the writers of the New Testament copying from the comedic records? Um, can you give me a definition of copy? Garfield, stop his time. I actually gave it in the beginning of the debate if you actually paid attention. I think you should know what copy. Well, you didn't know the title of the room, so I can understand why you don't know. Boy, stop. Get that, get that definition of yeah, you didn't know the title. You did not know the title of the debate. You put Christian in the no, debate. That's a straw man. Christian was not in the debate. I, that's not a straw man. That's what you did. That's a a All right, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's, let's look. You asked for a definition. I pause the time. Yeah. Definition. Yeah, I had to go screenshot because you tried to lie and say it was Christian. Hold that's on that. one second. Hold on one second, um, Tazara. My brother. I just told you to turn your camera off. You go back out. You come back in with your camera. <laughs> so now I'm gonna read it. Hold on, hold on, hold on, Desire. Let me deal with this guy right here. Mm -hmm. Oh boy, I tell you. Hold on one second. Hold on one second. Why is he sharing his screen? This is my question there. We shouldn't see his screen. Oh, my, mine is still up. My bad. I ain't know. Yeah, turn that shit off, man. All right, here we go. I'm gonna start the time back. Okay. And here we go. Go ahead. And so the definition of copy and imit well, we pretty much have imitation or transcript or reproduction of an of an original work, such as a letter, painting, table, or dress. That's right. So the question yeah, am I free to answer the question? Well, my I, I wasn't arguing transmission, I was arguing an imitation. The definition of copy as it um uh, corresponds to this debate that I used was imitation. And I showed you imitation in the text where all the God, both gods were doing the same thing. Both gods were resurrection deities. Both gods were considered kings. Both gods were considered real kings on this earth. Both gods I'm ascended into heaven and both gods were considered the bread of life. So I showed imitation. My argument was not transmission or plagiarism. That is that wasn't a my question. So, you, but, so then you agree that you didn't show transmission. That was not my argument. I showed I'm imitation. Just, so I'm, I'm just asking a simple, it's a simple yes or no. You agree that you did not show transmission. That is a loaded question pertaining to. It's not a, a loaded debate. question. It's a yes or no. A complicated question requires. It's, not, a complicated, it's complicated answer. because you know once you answer no, it destroys your argument of this debate. Well, my argument was not transmission, but imitation, according to the word. The title I of the debate was not imitation. The title of the debate is the biblical story of Jesus copy from ancient Kemet. We read the exactly. definition of copy. Imitation. That would mean that to, in order to copy, they would have to have access to the original to transmit it into what they call the New Testament. So I ask you another question. Can you show where they had a copy of the coffin text, the various coffin texts that you named? Can you show that they had access or a copy of those texts? No, you necessarily can't show. I don't think the argument was about do they have a copy of it. What we should be asking and answering is, is why do pyramid texts and coffin texts and um, excuse me, coffin texts and, and book of the dead texts end up in the Bible almost word for word? The same archetypes and motifs found in the pyramid text and coffin text end up in the Bible almost word for word. This is why I chose the um, the pronoun of imitation. You are arguing plagiarism. That is a plagiarizing argument. I am arguing imitation. The coffin text that you're mentioning, these were in the coffin, correct? The coffin texts have been pulled out, um, were pulled out, and these stories- We're talking about back then. We're not talking about area. today. We're not talking about today where archaeologists dug them up. Mm -hmm. The historians that I cited in the beginning, these, the question again, these coffin texts was in the coffin, correct? 
Um, yes, those were found at the temple. There were some found at the Temple of Saqqara. That is correct. Yes. So when you say at the pyramid that they, Saqqara, excuse me. Yes. So when you say that they're copied, this is why I'm asking the question. And because we're in 2023, this is why this question is going over your head. If you saying they copy, but these coffin texts are in the coffins, you have to show they had access to the coffins to copy it from. Hmm. That is an argument. That is an ignorant argument. I'm going to explain why. It's not just because. Can I have to answer the question? Just because something is called a coffin text or the pert in Peru does not mean that is especially found in the coffins alone. Here's why I'm going to explain this. These stories were based on the lore of the Kemetic gods, and they were also taught in the temples. The Jews lived in Alexandria, and they comprised of what? 50% 50, 50 according to Plutarch, excuse me, 50% of the population there. They could have learned these stories there when the New Testament was commissioned under Ptolemy um, or the Bible was commissioned under Ptolemy to be written along in the first and second century. You sitting up there saying that they are found in the coffin is a red herring, or a slippery slope argument saying just because they're in a the coffin, there's no way that the Bible can get them when we know through cultural diffusion that people can share stories found in other cultures and mix and mesh them, especially when the Jews themselves were never monotheistic. They always adopted other gods. So it would make sense that they would adopt a dying and resurrecting God. That question does not take away from the fact of imitation. If you were arguing transmission or you were arguing plagiarism, I would understand your argument. But I chose an argument, um, a semantical argument to show you that you must master the English language first. So that is what I'm arguing. And that's what I'm standing on. This story is an imitation based on a story that is a lot older than it. The only way this story can be an imitation is if you could show that they had access to what they were imitating. When you read the Bible, Matthews 5 and 17, it says, Think not that I come to destroy the law or the prophets. I came not to destroy, but to fulfill. For who, for I say unto you, to heaven and earth pass, one jot and one tittle shall no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. So based on the New Testament writings, keeping the law was essential. So sun worship, moon worship, any other worship outside of worshiping the most high would be forbidden. So the reason why you have to show that they actually copy from that is because what you're saying that they copy from goes against the law that they telling you, you must follow. So again, I'm going to ask you the same thing. Can you, well, I guess this would be the last same question. Can you show where they had access? Be, would last thing, the records were in rotation as early as 60 AD, which I already showed. So you would have to show how they had access to every single coffin text that you say they copy or imitated from to put in the records. And you can't, you keep using these images, but the images don't match. They might match from a Christian, like them pictures you show of Mary and all of that stuff might match from a Christian perspective, but you have to show that in the Bible and you have not shown in the Bible. Every example you have shown just has similar words. Similar words does not make it the same. So I'm going to ask you again. I'm sorry. Good. I'm, 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 I'm sorry, Captain Tazari. Oh, wait, wait, you, one, one more thing. You made a point to say that they was in Egypt. You have to prove that because as I showed Paul and it wasn't in Egypt, the only Israelites were those that came to keep the feast, which further proves they was not keeping the laws of Kemet, but the laws of God. When you go to Acts, the second chapter, it says devout Jews out of every uh, nation under heaven came to keep the feast of God, which further proves they were not following the gods of the nations that they were in. They was in Pathros, they was in Cush, they was in other nations outside of Egypt and still came back, me, yeah, outside of Egypt and still came back to serve God. That's in the book of Acts. So you keep saying that they put this stuff from Kemet in there, but time, the time, time, they didn't. Time, 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 time. Um, now, Chris, you're you're gonna get seven minutes to question to Zariak. And then after that, you're going to give your final um, five minutes closing remarks, and then Tazarek is going to close out. All right. Um, I'm going to start the clock. Chris, are you ready to ask your questions, my brother? Um, give me one second here um, because um, 
I want to do something real quick if it's okay. So you're asking him, so you don't really need to share that. Are you going to share something? All right, here we go. All right, I got it. All right. All right, cool. Okay, cool, sweet. Right, hold on, hold on. Kazaria, are you there, brother? Yeah, I'm here. You gave me right. right. So I'm going to start the clock right now. Go ahead, Chris. Okay, cool. Um, what was the name of the debate, Captain Tazaria? Is the biblical story of Jesus Christ copied from Timothy? Okay. Do you believe Jesus existed? Yes. Do you believe that Jesus arose to be um, at the right hand of the Father? I believe he rose to uh, redeem the children of Israel. Very good. So did he ascend into heaven is what I'm asking you? Yes. Okay. In the book of the dead, can you explain to me why does, do you, excuse me, I'm sorry, I'm moving a little bit too far here. Do you believe that he is a resurrection deity, that he resurrected for, um, resurrected from the dead? He's not the only person that ever resurrected from the dead in the Bible. You can go from Elijah, raise the man. But I'm just, uh, yeah, yeah, you're right about that. Well, yeah, so that it certainly doesn't make Chris, him. You didn't respond, Chris. You you gotta gotta really respond. Hand, I didn't ask him a question. You, did, ask ask, a question. you did ask a question. Do I believe? Okay, That's ahead. a question. Come on, man. Okay. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, don't get mad because I'm about to beat the hell out of you. So anyway, mm -hmm. Christ is not the only man that's been resurrected in the Bible. Elijah raised the boy from the dead. So even when Christ raised Lazarus from the dead, that's not nothing special. It's the river that flows through the Bible. So Elijah did it. Christ did it. And then Christ was resurrected as well. Okay. So you're saying that Jesus is not an original story based on the biblical narrative? Original story from what? We not talk about the story. We okay, talk about what I'm saying. You didn't ask about the story. You asked no, about resurrection. You said that you hey, said stop, 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 stop. I'm gonna pause the time. All right. When when Chris, when you ask a question, you gotta let Tazaria answer, bro. And it's not about if you like the answer or not. You gotta give him time to answer. Oh, I thought question. I was. Okay. Okay. All right. Go ahead. So relax. Just 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 ask a question and whatever. Sonny, do you want to say something, brother? Yeah, yeah, I wanted to say once Chris asks him a question, if Chris is fine with the answer, he can continue yeah. to move on. Why because wasn't that the case because, right? because it is Chris time, seven minutes. So Chris could get out five questions or six. He won't be able to get it out if you allow the other party to continue to go on. So once Chris is satisfied, he can begin to ask the next question. Hey, why wasn't and that the case with me? Can't though? let it should have been. It should have been. Okay, then if it, if it wasn't with me, then you can't come in here with the remix. Go ahead, mute your mic. I appreciate it. No, I'm it. just coming back over here. I'm listening to y'all now. But go ahead. Go ahead, Chris. You got you, you can handle this. All right, no sweat. Let me stop. So, Let me stop. Let me stop. you repeat that last question you asked? Okay, so I'm going to just ask you simply, is Jesus an original story? Christ is an original story as far as being um, the savior of the New Testament for the children of Israel. But the question that you asked about resurrection, about somebody being raised from the dead in the Bible, that's not original. The only thing original about Christ is he raised himself up with the power of the Most High. Elijah did raise a boy from the dead, though. Okay, so why does he share the same mythological components with Asar or Usir with him being resurrected if he's an original deity? He can't share it because according to what you say about the Book of the Dead, Horus raised Osiris up. In the Bible, oh, that according, that's what you said. According to the Book of the Dead, that's what you can interrupt me. I don't mind. That's what you say, okay, right? So what I'm saying up there saying is you're agreeing that he was resurrected. It doesn't matter. We still you have said, an uh, archetypal no, motif that, that he question. was resurrected. Am I correct? It's not, it's not the same archetype at all. You yes, it tried, is. It's a resurrection. In in this debate, you tried to compare Osiris being resurrected to Christ raising John. You even tried to make Lazarus be Osiris, which I showed Lazarus is Eleazar out of the Bible. So I showed where Lazarus, the name Lazarus came from, was from Eleazar, which is Hebrew for God help us. So when you ask, are they the same? No, they're not the same. When Christ was- I didn't ask you, were they the same? I asked you if why does Jesus contain the same mythological archetypes and motifs that we find he with Osiris? He doesn't contain the same. Osiris- well, is he a resurrection Osiris deity? Was Osiris was killed and cut into 14 pieces. And Jesus Christ. was killed and his body was broken also. His that's body what was that's not broken. Book chapter verse where his body was broken. 
He said in the no, 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 no. You can't ask questions, Tazara. I'm sorry. There is no book, chapter, verse. No, no, no. It's my turn to ask the question now. You I just was answer. finished answering. No, he I was said, answering, but I couldn't ask the Osiris, question. Hold on. In the story of Osiris, his body is broken. Jesus presents bread to his disciples and he says, this is what I'm talking about, um, about motifs. He breaks the bread and said, this is my body for it is broken for you. It was symbolic. And I'm asking you, why does he contain the same mythological archetypes and motifs that we find in the Osiris story if he is an original deity? So now I'm gonna answer this stupid question you just asked. So now you combine it, John the 11th chapter, when Christ got killed, excuse me, yeah, when Christ got killed, and you comparing it to Lazarus uh, with Osiris, and then you combining it to when Christ is by himself, you do realize you can, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, what you're combining is two different stories and trying to make them match, and you're looking like a fool. Osiris was cut into 14 pieces. His wife, who was his sister, had to resurrect the penis to bring forth Horus to then bring uh, thank you captain Horus thank you captain to life that's uh, thank you captain captain I don't know the bottom line is this. I'm asking why, you why are you if he's the an answer, original though? hold on captain why, why captain bro the bro no captain I her? asked you the name of the debate is 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 Jesus a copy no, wait, but what copy you just did but what you just did but I was you I'm cut sorry, me off in my you answer. Ask questions why you cut me off in my answer though hold on Chris Chris you gotta let him finish though you gotta let it How long does it take to answer this? When you took long to answer, I didn't stop you. I'm not Garfield stopping you. All right, all right, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Time never time had out. to unmute to say to Zaryak, you gotta let him finish. He's done it with you twice already. Time out, time out, time out, time out, time out. Um, I pause the time, right? Um, to Zaria, finish answering. And then um, Chris asks the next question, all right? Okay. All right. No problem. Go ahead. I appreciate Go ahead. It. So now what you just did was try to combine Osiris was chopped up into 14 pieces. His wife, who was his sister, had to go resurrect his penis, have sex with it, then create a boy that could then resurrect Osiris. That's that story. That story is nowhere in the Bible whatsoever. When Christ symbolically said the bread and the blood, it was in reference to the bread and the blood of the lamb because he was saying it represented the New Testament. That's biblical. He's biblically referencing himself to the Passover, not Osiris. All right, next point, next question. Go ahead, Chris. All right, so we agree once again. I'm gonna ask you a question. Can you give me the definition for original? Please pause the time, Garfield, while he pulls up a definition for original. Um, for everybody that's listening, we're gonna um, they're gonna have closing arguments after this, and if they choose to stay on, I'll stay on, and you, you, the crowd, the audience could ask questions. You guys could raise your hands, and I'll just pick whoever want to ask questions to whoever wants to stay. All right, if if Tazaria and Chris want to stay, so I got it. It says original. I'm gonna read to two definitions that they have: present or existing from the beginning, first or earliest. Number two created directly and personally by a particular artist, not a copy or imitation. Those are two definitions. Okay, so my position in this debate is Jesus is an imitation of other gods because he has three archetypes that define him. Resurrection, miracles, and a virgin birth. You don't believe in a virgin birth, that's fine, but mainstream Christianity do. does. Okay, you do? Okay, fine. So we see those three elements in the Jesus story, but we also see them in the comedic traditions and they were there first. So I ask you, was Jesus an original deity according to the definition? That's he's all I ask. Deity, but he's not a deity. And when you say original, the story in the Bible, when I say for the record, when I say I believe in the virgin birth. I believe it according to what I read in the Bible. Isaiah 7 and 14 said a young woman would be found with child from a man, not from a, a God having sex. So that eliminates what you say. So if anything, our story is original. The other stories require a woman to resurrect a penis to have sex with. That's your story. Our story is Joseph and Mary having sex 
and Joseph being from the house of David and producing the child. That's our story. So they're not the same stories. The deaths are not the stories. The resurrection is not even the same story. Christ wasn't resurrected by somebody else. Christ was resurrected of himself. So where's the copy of the Kemet side? Everything about Kemet and Osiris and Horus, and you're mixing two. You're mixing parts of Horus and parts of Osiris and trying to piece them together and make them be about Christ. All right, hold on, hold on, Cap. Chris, I ask your last question. All right, my last question is simply, what, what did the coffin text come first or did the Bible come first? The coffin text as what we have today came after the Bible. In 20 what I asked you. I'm speaking about the Chris, ancient Chris, 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 Chris. You can't no, no, no. I'm, no, I'm clarifying. I'm clarifying that. No, Garfield, can't, can't you do can't, that. Or you can't cut him off. If you want to answer. Yo, Garfield, that. Garfield, you got to let him clear his question because he I said know, it's but, not the question. Okay. You got to let Chris clear his question. It, okay, Chris Harris said he's talking about from the ancient. Yes, I'm talking, talking about the coffin. ancient coffin right. text as it is so in answer. the King's Valley. That's what I'm speaking about. What came first? Was it the coffin text? or the, the uh, biblical gospels? What came first? One second, I'm gonna read from what I have in my PowerPoint. If you don't mind, just let me grab it. Give me one second, I'm just trying to find it. Give me one second, if you could bear with me, please. This way you don't think I'm making it up of my own. Um, so if I read uh, Book of the Dead, and like I said, when I first read it, the Book of the Dead is called the Book of the Dead because they was found by the coffin, so it's the same thing. Yes. It says, an ancient collection of mortuary texts made up of spells or magic formulas placed in tombs and believed to protect and aid the deceased in the hereafter, probably compiled uh, and re-edited. The collection included the coffin text dated from 2000 BC, pyramid text 2400 BC, and other writers. Um, these records, Thank you. I have nothing else to say. I'm, I'm not finished though. Okay. But during the time of the New Testament, they had no access during that the, the time of the New Testament, they had no access. So to call it the coffin text as you call it today would be inaccurate. Because you again, they're written on the coffins themselves. All right, that's it. All right. So closing arguments with Chris first, get your um, get your stuff together. And then um, and close out, you got five minutes, my brother. All right, first of all, I wanna set up there and say, uh, this was a very fun debate and I hope we put on a great show for the HOK family. There are no hard feelings with Captain um, Tazariak. He does great work in the community and I have to respect that. Um, but I have to talk about the suspended logic that we see with people who believe in the biblical text versus when they see something that is a lot older. Are you, are you, clo are you closing? Is this your closing? Yes. You've been oh, going for I, about I, 40 I, I, seconds. I didn't know he I didn't know he was closing. All right, go ahead. I thought he was no going problem, to share. I thought, you. Was going, I thought he was going to share your screen. My bad. But go ahead. Thank you, Garfield. Thank you. Very Thank you. You're doing, you doing good, Chris. You're doing good, man. Just control. You I, I, know, I know. Let me let me close this. this thing on out. You know. Got so you, let me just, yeah, we gotta talk about this. Um, thank you, Garfield Reed. Um, so what we have here is um, a young man, a gentleman, um, who continues to suspend his own logic in order to make the biblical narrative fit. He sits up there and says that he needed to read something in order to know that the coffin texts were older. That didn't make any sense. Then what he tries to do is go into different cosmologies and mix them all up to try and make it look like that they have nothing to do with one another or it has nothing to do with the biblical text. I asked him a simple question and the question was, is the biblical narrative a copy? That's what I was asking him, imitation. That's what I proved today, that it's an imitation, that the same mythical elements and archetypal elements that are found in Kemet pre-existed there first before the biblical narrative even came about. That's what I was here to prove today. And I showed him. It doesn't matter who trans, um, transmissioned them. It doesn't matter who had access as who or who didn't. We just see that these coffin texts are ending up in your Bible. You know what? I asked Garfield Reed an important question. How does Philo's Logos concept end up in the book of John? You know, the word of God, which predates the New Testament um, by some 100, I think, what, 75 to 100 years. It predates it. So how does his concept end up in there? Are we going to sit back and say, hey, who transmitted it? Who who did it? 
No, we have to use common sense and see that this is a narrative put together by a group of people who are trying to pursue something um, or push something for a political gain or political interest. That's all it is. And what they did is they gathered texts in Alexandria, they gathered texts from Sumeria, they gathered texts from all over the world, and they put together this Bible. We cannot continue to suspend our logic in order to make something fit. Jesus is a sun deity. Osiris is a sun deity. Jesus is a resurrection deity. Osiris is a resurrection deity. Os uh, uh, Horus is the son of Asar. Jesus is the son of Yahweh or El. This gentleman even sat up there and told us tonight that, guess what? He said that um, they um, never had sex. I mean, that they had sex, but he can never point to you in the Bible where he says that. Now, regardless of the fact, guess what? Mainstream Christianity does agree that there was a virgin birth there, but that does not take away from the fact that Jesus is a resurrection deity. Jesus performed miracles. Jesus ascended into heaven. Right. Just because you have a different story in the book of Luke versus a different story in the book of John doesn't take away from what he represents. You understand what I'm saying? If somebody floated up into heaven, he's a God. But then he said, well, no, he's not. It doesn't make any sense when we see the same thing going on with Haru, who ascended into heaven to be on the right side of his father with who? Osiris. It's symbolic of nature. That's it. I want to close out. I want to say thank you, HOK family. This was a fun debate. Um, I want to say shout out to everybody who spent their money. I hope it was well spent today, and I hope I made everybody proud. I want to say thank you, Garfield Reed, for being an excellent moderator tonight. And I want to give a, give a shout out to the ISUPK. I want that shirt cap and um, say thank you. And I see my man, Captain 10K, is in the um, audience. And I just want to say peace, guys. I'm out. I really enjoyed this debate. Peace. I'm going to stay for your closing cap. I'm not going to leave. Hey, before um, Captain speak, if you want to stay on and take some questions from the audience, that's totally up to you. You don't have to stay. If you want to stay, that's totally up to you. All right. Um, Captain, you're up, family. Are you sharing your screen, Captain? Um, yeah, because I want to highlight uh, one thing. Um, and Chris want that shirt because he talking trash here, but he know he lost. That's <laughs> Proof is in the pudding, man. Oh, um, <laughs> you say nothing about that all at all. You ain't getting that all. <laughs> that, I knew uh, you weren't gonna make it. That's all right, though. Listen, if you came, if you would approve transmission, I'd have gave it to you, brother. But you did. That not. is a plagiarism argument. I'm not making that. that all right, mute your, mic, mute your mic, Chris. Come on, come on, right. Captain. You ready? Yeah, let me do from current slide. I'm gonna unshare. I just want to. Uh, remind people of one thing um here we go when he says when he talks about um i said G mary and joseph had sex if i read john 1 and 45 it says philip found that nathaniel was saith unto him we've found him of whom moses and the law and the prophets did write jesus of nazareth the son of joseph that's what the bible says because the bible tells you the angel told mary that Christ will sit on the throne of his father, David. That's where Joseph comes from. In this entire debate, a lot of the information he used is from Gerald Massey, which is why I have this screen here. Gerald Massey, even in his own presentation, said that they did not have, no Greek or Roman had access to the hieroglyphical language that was buried out of sight for thousands of years. So if he's going to use Gerald Massey, which he has tonight, Gerald Massey, page six of the book that he's quoted from, says that they did not have access to this information that he's saying they copied from, that he's saying that they got it from. Their scholars do not respect Gerald Massey. So when y'all want to assume he won, the scholars reject the very information that he's using to verify it. This has been a horrible debate to me personally. Entertaining, yes. Horrible, no, because what I expected was a better argument from him other than these so-called similarities. He combined John the 11th chapter, Matthew the 27th chapter, and piece the bread here, and John, excuse me, Christ raising a whole another man from the dead to make that be about Osiris and Horus. Well, who's the other God? It would have to be at least another God for that to even make partial sense. 
So it's not logical in this debate to biblically show at best if he was battling a Christian, I don't I can't even say he still would have the credence because once you establish or once I established when the New Testament was founded, any information that he brought forth that came after the New Testament was founded is irrelevant. So he did not show that in this debate at all. I was able to cleanly show when the New Testament was founded as early as 60 AD, it was already in rotation. I was able to show that by, from scholars that there's no Egyptian influence based on the Textus Receptus manuscript of the Bible. I was able to show that. He did not dispute any of the information that I gave. It's called a straw man argument to paste all these different coffin texts and say these people had access to all of these different coffin texts and then just made up this story about Christ when Christ taught to be against the very Egyptian text that he's saying they copied from. It just doesn't make sense. And the last thing I was able to show for every quote, I was able to show how Christ got it from the Old Testament. That, that bread from heaven, I was able to show that that same bread came down in the Exodus story when they was leaving out of Egypt. So I, I was able to show where Christ actually copied from. He copied from his own ancestors. So when you actually pay attention to the debate, he did not show any copy, any of that. He just grasped at straws. So I appreciate y'all coming out today. Um, this slaughter of Egypt will take place when I get um, shocked in a couple of weeks. And so with that, um, I yield. All right. Um, let me give my take on the debate. And I want the people not to follow me. Just do what you do. But what I will say on this debate, it is very clear that, um, that Chris won this debate to me, hands down. Chris won this. It's like a landslide. And so I, I can't see how anybody else 